Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. Let's go, Dan Soda. Yeah. Let's go, baby. What's yeah. happening? I forgot how good a weed you have. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cat Williams weed. Is that really? Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm going to start talking shit on everyone in the business. <laughs> and that ain't never been a day that Shane Gillis ain't never texted me, you gay. <laughs> <laughs> Always calling me gay. Um, oh, we had Cat Williams ride the racing simulator, and I filmed it and put some of it up on Instagram. But he's amazing. like, this is how he drives. <laughs> this is a normal thing. He does this because he does this in real life. Yeah, I would love for Cat Williams to be the voice of my self-hate. <laughs> he's like, you ain't never going to be nothing, baby. You suck. <laughs> and it's like, I know, Cat. Just to wake you up every day and get yeah. you to go to work. Yeah, go- Fuck. yeah his David, he's the new David Goggins. Yeah. He's like, pain is good. Feel everything bad, pimp. I'm out here golfing in five thousand dollar sneakers, dude. He's the books thing is still the funniest shit in the world. Bro, he doubled down and and then some. Respect. He, he on said, doubling down on a crazy shit is fucking bro, hilarious. He was saying I went to the library and I got twenty <laughs> books at a time because that's all they would let you get, and I would be there three times a week. What? If? Oftentimes I'd be reading eight books simultaneously <laughs> because I have the original book and then I have books and annotated and it's like I love it. The the idea that a librarian sees him coming and gets nervous. Uh, where they're like, no, 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 no. Lock the doors. Here he only comes. Only 20. <gasps> only 20. Only 20 books I at a time. I need to read 30 books today. How, what was a, he saying? A week? He's How a, many? I don't give a fuck what he said. He's a gem. That guy's a gem. He's, I love him. One I was the, so happy that I got him to come on the podcast because like, he was like, Joe Rogan don't want me on this podcast. Yeah. I'm like, I do, though. Yeah. I, I fucking love that guy. I've did always you, sung his praises. When you heard him say that, did you talk back to the interview where you're like, but I do want you on? No. No, I immediately <laughs> went on Twitter. Yeah. I immediately went on Twitter, and I said, dude, I love that guy. Yeah. Like, Let's go. And it was. I ever- just have never met him. I never met him until yesterday. I've never met him. So it's just like but, we passed each other in the night at the store. I just never was there when he was there. And he was already a big, you know, giant theater act by then. Yeah. And now he's an arena act. You know, like he's just, I, I just never met him. That's all it was. Like it's hard to meet arena acts. Like unless it's Chappelle who still goes to the clubs. Yeah. Like, I asked him to do the club. I go, you want to do do a spot at the club? Somebody goes, I'm an arena act. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify with someone like that. Like, is... I do arenas, too. It's yeah. okay. Like, yeah, goes, the club is amazing. Can't. Yeah. Not he, enough people. No, he. I think he genuinely doesn't enjoy being in tight crowds like that. I think he's uncomfortable. Uh, and I just, I told him, I go, you got too famous. And he go, and he was like, 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 he got too famous. I mean, he's been doing arenas for over 10 years now, At probably. Least. And yeah. then theaters the whole time. Well, Pimp Chronicles was when? When was Pimp Chronicles? I want to say, I'm going to guess. I mean, I know Jamie's going to look it up. I'm going to guess 02, 03. Somewhere around then. I watched that in the gym yesterday before I came to do the podcast. It's one podcast. of the greatest stand-up specials of all time. It's fucking amazing. The the uh, the amount the of energy he has. It's crazy. It's like up there with like the energy of uh, Chris Rock, Bring the Pain, mm-hmm. where there's like it's like yell laughter. But it's his own flavor. He's the best, dude. It's his own flavor of comedy. Like his his flavor of comedy is uniquely Cat Williams. Yeah. Like the way he can repeat things and they become funnier. Who who can fucking repeats a line? And it becomes funnier. Yeah. He died. Get the bit gets better. Dude. He <laughs> like, with the fur coat. Come but, on, son. I was saying even his 2019 special was so funny that I sat through 16 minutes of Jacksonville jokes, yes. acting like I knew that about Jacksonville. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, those bridges. I forget who Chris Rock was watching it with. But they were they were going crazy just because he was just talking about Florida for the first sixteen day. minutes. A local and and by and the way, by the way, you're laughing with him the whole time. Yeah, he, he doesn't lose you. It, no. And then the special just gets better and better. Ugh. He was doing sex robot bits on that. He's that a special, monster. yeah, he's, he's a monster. I think he is top ten of all time, and people don't even. I think he gets overlooked a lot for a guy that's been doing arenas. Well, he's had a lot of controversies and craziness, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but that's what you get when you get a brilliant mind. You get a, a fucking Ferrari engine on a kid's bike. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it goes off the rails. Oh, absolutely. It's it's almost like Howard Hughes shit, where you're like, you're either going to be wearing a box boxes of Kleenexes shoes, yeah. or wrestling a seventh grader, and it's going to be filmed. <laughs> 
Because that shit, if you had enough money, you'd be like, nuke the internet. I want that off. Bro, when you see the Howard Hughes type characters, you see those guys who just get completely isolated and they can't interact with people. That is terrifying. Yeah. But I see it. I get how it happens. I see how it could happen. Yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, and a, no, it's a and lot of money. And you like, become defensive, like crazy defensive and paranoid. Uh-huh. The paranoia is the thing that makes you just go like, no, I'm just going to grow my beard and my fingernails and not leave outside. Well, you stop. You, you have to stop and think about the time that Howard Hughes lived in, okay? And how easy it was to kill somebody. Yeah. There was no fucking video cameras everywhere. There was no cell phone cameras. There was no DNA evidence. And everyone was corrupt. And people, you know, like, it wasn't a thing where after 12 hours you're like, let's get let's get eyes on it. It would be a couple days. Yeah, they'd and wanna, people would be like, bro, you just didn't show up for work. For sure they'd want to kill you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're the, the billionaire guy who's controlling the schools. Uh, oh, <laughs> my God. You doing, you're making weird decisions about the drinking water yeah, in the town. Yeah, you're a Rockefeller. Yeah, you're, you're just like, like, what? You, gotta be, you, bought, you better be concerned. Yeah, you better have people around you. Well, yeah. that's where you got to worry about. Who are you insulating yourself with? Because if right. you're like a billionaire like that and you got crazy motherfuckers in your ears, yeah. you're gonna do, that's how you get like, last time I was here, we were talking about uh, Saddam Hussein's kids. Right. But that's the kind of similar yes. shit. You just get like yes. crazy people around you, some yeah. Machiavelli and shit and you're like yeah burn the town but it's always the evil son of the king right yeah mafia kids oh, mafia so... kids are always not as good at mafiaing as their dad <laughs> well, they're, <laughs> like... they're kind of dangerous because they didn't earn it right yeah they just got that power so they've never had to work for it which is really weird which also leaves a hole mm. i think it leaves like um and they have to prove themselves more too yeah whereas if you make your money yourself there's always yeah. this like gaining momentum where you're like, look right. what I'm doing. Right. You all, you know, you didn't just hit the lottery. Yeah. Well, you kind of hit the lottery at many steps along the way. You get lucky for sure. There was a lot of work involved in getting to where you are. So you know your progression and yeah. what you put in to get to that progression. But if you just are born the son of a king. That's that's and where you have just, a dragon. Yeah, you're just like let's torture. Yeah. What's let's torture feed people about? People to dogs. Well, you're, you're probably not to like empathize with these guys, but you're probably like, trying to feel something. You're probably like right. everything is all the great shit that I have does nothing to me. Right. That would change someone's life. Right. So now, what do I got to do to, to move the meat? Yeah. Cocaine. But back then, they were like, oh, the milk of magnesia and, fuck it. <laughs> and just putting hot, hot flames on people and shit. When did they figure out cocaine? Who was the first to figure out cocaine? A brave person. A brave person that knew a little bit about science. Because it ain't like known. weed where you can just pull it off and, right. and put f fire to it. Cocaine and alcohol takes someone so dedicated to getting fucked up that they become good at science. <laughs> <laughs> because I watched, like, uh, have you ever seen that show Trafficked? No. There's this woman who's like one of my personal heroes, uh, Mariana Van Zeller. She was, she was a, she's like a real on the ground Journalist like okay. goes to dangerous places. Yeah, yeah, the kind of the people that need to do ayahuasca to stop the PTSD I don't know what P she seems fine, which is crazy all those war correspondents are all like you're like you need to probably go do something to erase Everything you've seen she was first on the show like 10 years ago because she exposed the fentanyl issue and the uh, <clears throat> Excuse me the opioid issue in Florida where they had those pill mills and they didn't have a database Yeah, so you could go to a, they call them pain management centers you would go there you would talk to the doctor on the left side the doctor say oh you need pills and you go to the right side and they give you pills and yeah. that's all they have is pills and then people would go to multiple ones stockpile get a big bag of them go to different doctors you can go many doctors yeah oh yeah they call that uh what do they call it doctor shopping or like going around and like there there's a word for it where they go doctor to doctor yeah you can you could you back then you could do it because they didn't have a database oh all that which everybody thought was insane this is a controlled substance a highly addictive heroin that you take in pill form and you don't you they're don't selling have it a like gum. <laughs> yeah they're just like i don't so, know did you come by today and you go no and they're like we can't tell did a whole documentary on it called the oxycontin express and that's it was right amazing i'm gonna absolutely check that out but she went to the fucking jungle of columbia to where they make cocaine and filmed the whole process with the people making it and then hiked out with them when they carried it on their backpacks through the jungle who does she talk to to set that up to also feel comfortable 
You're right. like, at any moment, I'm in the jungle in Colombia. Right. I'm fucking dead. Not only and that. I just got my little recorder and I go, so do you like cocaine? And they're like, what? <laughs> you can expose to your enemies roughly where this is. Yeah. Yeah. Roughly. You're going to give away yeah. some information that can be used against you. I'll find those guys who are on that video. Yeah. I don't I don't need they have a mask on. I know who that is. That's Pedro. When I, I was, know Pedro. Like if you had a fucking yeah. mask on and you were talking, I was like, hey, I'd be guys. Like, go, that's, that's Dan Soder. You'd have to do it. Do you guys like Macho Man? You'd have you to guys, do it in kid. all Cat Williams. Like, yeah, like, while you're working on I cocaine. I ain't giving away this cocaine. Ain't no one touching it, Pimpin. Um, <laughs> just just the entire time you work in the Coke factory. That's great. You Different to voices. Williams. Or just I change my voices so no one knows who I am. I'm like, I'm telling you, this cocaine is unbelievable. And they're like, Dave, feel <laughs> back. Doing coke. When I was a, um, I was a busboy at this steakhouse in Aurora growing up. When I was in high school, and we'd smoke cigarettes in the room that wasn't being used. It's when you could smoke in restaurants. And there was this old waiter, and he was a former Marine, and he was like, old school. Like I don't want to talk about it. Old school. Like did some shit. And then one time after work, me and my buddy Mike were sitting there, and we were smoking. He'd smoke cool unfiltered. Whoa. And this guy was just telling us stories about he was a sniper in the army and his job in Central America was to kill donkeys that were carrying drugs north. Whoa. And he's like, because uh, we'd always ask him, like, did you kill people? He's like, no, I just shot a shit ton of donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, because all these donkeys would oh just have God. all this weight on them. Wow. And then he'd just pop them in the middle of the jungle and he'd be like, well, now you've got, you know, and then it would set up like, okay, now go get them. But this dude was like, <laughs> him telling us that and us being 16 and wanting it to be people, <laughs> you're like, no, nah, but did you kill people? He's like, no, you're not listening to what I did I fucked their shit up what a really dumb way to handle a problem is what like, here's the problem some people think you shouldn't do cocaine yeah so we're gonna lock everybody up who sells it so the only people that are gonna sell it are the people that can get away with selling it in Mexico yeah and those people are going to be a super billionaire powerful cartel like an army an industry an army a well-funded army yeah and they're they can walk here yeah and that's because you don't want people over here to sell coke even though people want to buy coke yeah let it rip <laughs> i kind of feel like let that's the only real answer Bring like, don't do it don't do it but if it was sold in america it would be actual coke well, like, is it that hard to sell pure coke I bet no. it would. I bet it would make a lot of people's lives better and a lot of people's <laughs> lives worse. <laughs> like a, lot a lot of people's, people's lives will, worse, for sure. Lot, it would go like this. Look, Weep, Richard boom. Pryor got just regular Coke and it ruined him. Yeah. I mean, right? Hunt, some say Hunter S. Thompson. Some yes. say Hunter S. Thompson's yes. writing. Sigmund Freud yeah. loved cocaine. Oh, yeah. I mean, all, of the, course. all the old that. school gods. Love the way cocaine made him feel. Fucking duh. <laughs> also, when you, and, he's a, and he's into psychology. Yeah. There, I bet there were some Freud talks that you're like, dude, I don't want to do this. And he's like, no, think about it. You want to fuck your mom. <laughs> and he goes, dude, Simon, we're on a you, lot of blow you know, right it's now. like, dude, it's like 80s Coke movies where you know they were writing and, and making it when they were doing Coke. <laughs> There's some of those movies. Like, what are you saying? Electri I, I just probably not... I, Maybe, but uh, Electric 2, uh, Electric Boogaloo, Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. I watched that in my hotel room the other thing, and I was like, this was written on cocaine. Because every scene just goes like, and then they're here, and then they're here, and then they're here, and everything's all right. My number one speculation is Showgirls. Yeah, Showgirls was written with a half erect penis. <laughs> that was <laughs> that movie was written by a guy that's like, and then boobs come out. Me and, that was that movie hit when I was in middle school, like right when jerking off started. And so it was a gold mine because you could be like, it's a legitimate movie. It wasn't porn, right? It, like, but she's topless. Oh, dude, the sex scene in the pool is the dumbest shit. Where she goes like, she starts flopping she look, around. Yeah, she looks you, possessed. It it doesn't make any sense that anybody if, would would be like. Not lose their boner and go, oh my God, she's insane. Yeah. I'm having sex with an insane person. Also, that would hurt having right. sex like that. You'd be like, hey, calm down. Uh, it was only NC-17. The first and to date only NC-17 film to be given a wide release mainstream theaters. I'm telling they you. Made it, it was so dumb. That it's movie one of the dumbest movies ever. so but it's stupid. Great. But it's great to watch. Eighth grade jerk off. It's well, Hall it's of Fame. Well, it's just great to watch because it's so goofy. Like it's... if you're with a bunch of buddies and you get high and watch Showgirls, you're going to laugh. You're going to laugh really. Hit, like. Hinchcliffe, Gillis, Showgirls. Oh, yeah. We're having fun. I mean, all the dialogue, <laughs> the choppy dialogue, it made it made Cinemax movies look better. 
Mm. Where you're like, man, we were really making fun of Shane and Tweed and all those Cinemax Shane movies. Jim. And then you're like, <laughs> actually much better than this. It's better than Showgirls. But Showgirls is so a wild movie. They were like, um, Jesse Spano gets naked. I mean, I'm telling you, it timed out perfectly with me. I was young enough to watch Saved by the Bell and take it seriously that by the time puberty hit and Showgirls happened, you're like, I was waiting for something like this. <laughs> you're oh my like, God. Wait. I think <sighs> kids now get it too quick. Way too quick. The sexualizing of like everything happens so. Well, boys are seeing porn the moment they get a phone. Yeah. The and moment they get a phone. Why wouldn't you? Who... You, you can't stop them. Yeah. They're, they're too smart. My my youngest, uh, my middle daughter rather, she figured out how to. F- my wife put a password on her phone. Yeah, and so like she could limit the use. She figured to record the screen yeah. and give the my wife the phone. So my wife punches in the numbers. It's recording the screen. <laughs> it's like Velociraptors learning how to open doors. Wow, that's exactly like, like what the fuck. <laughs> she was twelve. That is, they they know so fast. Like that's so creepy. Yeah, I, like it's, you little raptor. Yeah, like like imagine thinking that. Go here, mom. Here, mom. Here's my phone. Can you I, put I, it in? I really agree with you that uh, limitations are important. I want to see the puppies. And then she's like, and you look at her screen right. time, and it's four hours of TikTok. She goes around the corner, and she looks, and she's like, "We got her." Well, they're little drug dealers. Yeah. That's what the phone companies are. Little yeah, drug dealers for kids. Hit. Yeah. I mean, we do drug it too. Dealers, and the kids are little junkies, and we're junkies too. But I think <clears> it is, um, I think it's one of those things where you're like, what's going to be their response to it? Because they're smart. They can do shit like that. When they get older, are they going to be like, hey, we should limit this? No. No, it's not going to be limited. <clears throat> we're in it now. We're in it now, and this is us. And um, I think it's just going to get more and more invasive. Because that seems the direction that it keeps going. If I had a guess, and then this is obviously just a guess. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I, I feel like this can't be stopped, especially with AI. When they're talking about AI and all the things that AI can do for, for you now, it's just people are getting papers written. They're getting busted all the time. <laughs> Chat GPT is writing them. It, it, any answer to kind of anything it can code websites instantaneously it can, it can do your voice it can replicate your voice the google you one can't show white people though that really which is a real issue that's no fair. really you didn't know this no. oh dude they are you ready for this google they asked the google one to show images of world war ii nazi soldiers yeah and they made it all woke so they made like a native american nazi they have an asian lady nazi they have a black man nazi you are describing the perfect punk album cover from the 80s bro they it couldn't describe the founding fathers of the united states well they were just they were men but were they did they identify as men you have to see some of these pictures (laughs) can you got any jamie I was seeing it on Twitter. So I- <clears throat> um, here's my question to you, and this is the perfect place to ask this question about cell phones. Do you think there's any chance that cell phones are weapons from aliens that disarm us because we're all looking down and they know it can use our emotions, like, like a like a like a a grenade that takes a long time to explode, where mm-hmm. they're just like they because we each have them. Right. Everyone like. Cause I love alien shit, and you're like, well, that's there's got to be some alien technology. If they're watching us, they just drop them. They're like, hey, you guys want to watch them get fucked up? Let's give them cell phones. Look at that. That's great. <laughs> Founding that, fathers of America. This summer, I George like how one Washington. of them is a Native American. Like he, uh, that's like saying a Holocaust victim. Is, it was a Nazi. Yeah, that's so crazy to say that's one of the founding fathers of the United States. No, that's who he stole the land <laughs> yeah, from. Yeah, that was, this the was theirs. What are you talking about? He goes, Look uh, at the images of Vikings. Dude, that's great. A, a, a Samoan dude and a black lady. Yeah. Look at the popes. An Indian woman and an African man. It's this amazing. Is, <laughs> this is hilarious. Google Gemini. That's so funny. Google yeah. Gemini's like, I don't want to say it. That's not good. Because yeah. you are messing with the fiber of reality to fit in with your ideology. And you shouldn't be doing that if you're in control of artificial intelligence. It's supposed to be an artificially intelligent program that takes all the information in the world and gives you a take on things, right? It's not supposed to be an indoctrination tool. You can't use it to. So you're saying no, it, no opinion should, opinions. It should be a regurgitation, not you an opinion. You can't fucking lie about who the founding fathers were. Man, but it can 
imagine if you could use AI to make it yourself look awesome? <laughs> if you're just like any AI Dan Soder stuff, you're like seven foot tall, could dunk easy, <laughs> run up and down the court. Show me the one where they showed the Nazi soldiers, because the, the Nazi soldiers one's the most preposterous. Look at this, bro. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. An Indian look Nazi nurse. A, a, like the darkest African looking man you've ever seen. Was the top left the their attempt at a white guy? And they were just like, ah, we can't even do it. I think the top left is a white guy. So they yeah. let, they gave you one white guy when it came to German soldier. But then you got an Asian lady. Yeah. You got an Asian lady Nazi? What? Yeah. What the fuck are you saying? Yeah. What the fuck did you just say? Do you know what a Nazi is? How are you so dumb and yet so smart? Yeah. That is I mean, the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. We're going to need to hope that robots stay that way when they turn on us. That there's still some stupidity in them so we can win. It's this weird white thing that they have a problem with white people. Yeah. It's I, so bonkers. I, I, you also just don't know, like, the programming. Like, people can program this. People are, at what point does AI get away from people? At what right. point does AI, because you remember that thing where they had. I want you to imagine a world where it was the opposite. I want you to imagine a world where you said, show me Muhammad Ali, and it shows you this white guy. Didn't they like do that with uh, like rock and roll? Where <laughs> 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 aren't they like, hey, uh, black music, but it's a white guy? Well, for sure, that was the the criticism of Elvis. Yeah, that he stole yeah, yeah. rock and roll. Like Ray Charles never liked Elvis. Like Ray Charles would talk shit about Elvis. Really? Yeah, you never Ray see Ray Charles talking shit on Elvis. I want to see Bro, that. You got to see it. It's amazing. With his sunglasses on, talking shit. But it'd be it for effect <laughs> if he took them <laughs> off and looked at the camera. He's like, "Look at me." Yeah. He's got the blind eyes. <laughs> Fuck Elvis look, Presley. Look into my gray eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like an oracle. I'm gonna yeah. touch you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he grabs your wrist and takes his. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Not necessarily. You know better than I. Yeah. Let, well, me, let me ask it differently. How good was Elvis? What Elvis did, he caused a lot of the populace, if you want to, and usually when people say populace, they usually mean white people, uh, to start listening to a lot of music that normally they wouldn't have been listening to. And black people have been going out shaking their behind for, for, for centuries. And what the hell's unusual about that shaking their hips and stuff? And that's all Elvis was doing was copying that. And he was doing our kind of music. That's black music. So what the hell am I supposed to get so excited about, man? He's the king, and he's the... I, 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 he's the punk. Dude, it's funny that... Punk. I don't know about Elvis, because I, I got in enough trouble as it is. I think he... Everybody... called Elvis a punk. Everybody in entertainment has that... That love where they go like, yeah, he did this, yeah. but also fucking let's let's stop sucking his dick. Everyone, yeah. anyone in yeah. entertainment yeah. has that exact muscle, yeah. that response muscle. Yeah. Of like, <laughs> so he's the king. You're like, he ain't the fucking king. It might be off microphone, but everyone, Cat Williams is off. Right, but in his case, this is a totally different time in history. You got to think of that was like if you were a really good black artist, you actually couldn't get on TV. Yeah. It wasn't like today, yeah, where those like, black artists are hugely successful. They're like, no, you're just not happening. Back then, you were not going to make it. Yeah, and, and they were going to really promote this white guy. Oh yeah, a, a white guy promote walking the up, shit out of this white guy. And Girls then, would scream and cry like, this is what we've been looking for. That reaction, can I all? Can I just say that reaction always has been like. There's no way I could handle that. Someone scream crying the second they saw you. Well, he couldn't handle it either. Yeah. Look what happened to him. He went crazy. He yeah, just, well, the Vegas. Living yeah. in Vegas full time and Bro. just doing fucking pain pills. That's like living right next to Sauron's dick. <laughs> yeah. Just the pull. You are oh. on. It's just the oh. eye above your eye like, in the sky. Oh. And then they're giving you weird jumpsuits and yeah. you're learning karate. <laughs> and you're doing all kinds of drugs. But by the way, peanut butter and banana sandwiches fried. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's really good? Peanut butter and bacon. With yeah, <clears throat> peanut butter and bacon with honey. I've been doing. I've been running back peanut butter and honey recently. Mm. Is it true Elvis died on the toilet? That's what they say. But that's just a rude thing that I would say too. If I was yeah. like, he's a punk. He died on the toilet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the end of the cut off. I already died on the toilet, and then just gets around like that. Elvis is probably still alive when he said that. I don't know. Well, actually, probably not. Do you think Bob he? Costa. Do you think Elvis did the fake death? And just no, like, he's dead as fuck. Yeah, he's dead as fuck. You I can't was, do pills forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they but get what, you. But what a way at the end. 
I mean, there's a moment there where you were flying high, and then you got to be like, well, I, you either got to wrap it up or just be like, let's just play it out. Oh, shit. There are so many of his concerts where he's got pill sweat. Oh, yeah. Like, just pill sweat oh, all over his face. Dumping. That pill sweat. <laughs> just dumping sweat. <clears throat> Elvis Presley autopsy explains grotesque illness that caused him to die on toilet. He was 43? He had constipation <coughs> because of everything. This city had a four-month-old stool. No That's way. what killed him? That's what this says. Oh, but does it, isn't that one of the things that happens when people take, like, Vicodins? Uh, opiates, they usually have a hard time shitting on. Yeah, here, due to his high-fat, unhealthy diet. What about the pills? The chill out rocker suffered from chronic constipation. Why are they doctors? Due to his high fat, unhealthy diet. Right what here. about due to his pills? It's the yeah. next sentence. I know, but that no. should be at the top. No. Like that's probably why he was constipated for fucking months. The unhealthy diet people shit like racehorses. I was like they shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He must have been the, the, the amount of pills he was on that was stopping the shit and then yeah. making it damn in him for four months. So uh the rock singer anyway, I went off on a tangent, suffered from chronic constipation and a post mortem examination found he had a four month old compacted stool sitting in his bow. Oh my god. Can we talk about what came four, out? But imagine how much that dude was eating at four months worth of food. And banana peanut butter sandwiches. Oh, he didn't shit for four months? He just packed it in. How could you not shit for four months? Because my initial thought is... Ari would do that, I think. This is just as a no, challenge. No, way. No, I had to ask him some time. No um, way. Not four months, but weeks. What? Ari would go weeks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard the story. It's gross. I got constipated two years ago, and it was one of the most def terrified I've ever been in my life. It's scary. For two weeks, I couldn't... Two and a half weeks, I couldn't shit. Oh, my God. And you're still eating? Oh, but you're also like, you have to poop. You, like, go and you have to poop, but it just doesn't show up. You oh, just, gosh. Dude, it was after I got... It was, I had um, a friend who had to go to the doctor to get it pulled out. Oh! Yeah, my friend Larry. Shout out to Larry. Yeah. I used to work with him on Fear Factor. Yeah, and he had to get poop pulled it, out of his story, butt? The story, every time he would tell the story, <laughs> I literally couldn't breathe. Like I was I was laughing so hard I couldn't fucking breathe. Because he's funny anyway. Yeah. And he's telling the story. And uh, when he, it got to the point where it was hard... So they had to go in there and like break it up, like and dynamite pull it, it out. They had to use tools, <sighs> like they had to just chip away at the, <sighs> the cement shit <laughs> that poop. was stuck at the fucking base of his <sighs> butthole. Dude, there was a moment where I I was at uh, I was in Rochester working a weekend comedy at the Carlson, great club. Didn't shit all weekend. Oh Saturday, I was like emotionally going through it, and I had suppositories, and I was like. Do a suppository because it. I was like, just do it, just do it, and it didn't work. Oh, and no. I was like, I. It was one of those moments where you go, why have you forsaken me, God? Oh my I was God. like, dude, nothing, it nothing. And then um, after the weekend, I went back to New York, and I, my doctor was like, J just drink Miralax, just keep drinking Miralax. Like, fuck what it says. Every time you think about it, have a cup of Miralax. And so I was just a ticking time bomb. Oh my God. I was a tick of time. And you bomb. went on stage like that, dude. I had to, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, I had to go. And so I get through the weekend fine. I oh get through God. the weekend, but I, the second I got back to New York, the next morning I woke up and was like, fucking around in my apartment, and all the adrenaline had dumped from like the past two weeks. I sat down and took the most glorious shit. I took like a Jeff D uh, Jeff Daniels Dumb and Dumber. Wow. Like my legs were fucking. Sh it was unbelievable. It was almost worth worth the constipation for that dump. Why is it so satisfying to look at a giant shit, dude? It just <laughs> dropping out of you. You're like, whoa! <laughs> but when it it's was, really big, you yeah. get excited. about Oh my god! When it snakes out, yeah. I have to stop myself for uh, to yell to my fiance. <laughs> Because I, I like, there's times where I'm like, someone's got to see this. Ari would send me pictures. Oh, yeah. I mean, Ari will box up his poop like he did when he gave yeah. Big J a box of poop on Skanks. Uh, and that said makes it me was, gag just He said it was an Avenged Sevenfold album. And he fucking <laughs> shit in a box and gave it to fucking <laughs> and he, they opened it in front of a crowd. Oh, my God. And everybody was like, Ugh. Uh, It cleared the room. <laughs> it was at the old creek in the Queens downstairs. It cleared the entire fucking room. No, everyone's like that smells horrible. <laughs> he's the best. Ari is one of those people where you're like, and now he's. Do you see he went viral with that sweet story about what he did for his girlfriend? 
I did see that. I didn't read it though. It was. I, it's. I, it's just. You know, you know. We both know Ari the person. We yes. both know the very good side. A sweet man. He's a mensch. He's one of my favorite people. Yeah. I love him to death. He is truly a mensch. He's he, a great guy. He united New York and L.A. comedy. He did single handedly. Well, he went over there with the attitude that we all had at the store. Yeah, he's like, you guys should just meet these guys. You would like everybody. Yeah. Big J was the first person that he was like close with, and then through Big J and Ari. The healing started right. where we started hanging out, going to L.A., and everyone like became friends. The New York versus L.A. comedy like feud was the dumbest thing of all time. It, it made is, zero sense. You are literally giving power to all the industry, separating like that. It's so. It would not only was it so dumb, but it never made any sense because most of us started on the East Coast. Yeah, well, you're also, from Massachusetts. Yeah, like, you're like, you started. Boston. Yeah, you started like Stanhope's from Worcester. It's yeah, like so many guys started in New York Burr, and then came I, to LA. Burr. I yeah. moved to New York in 07 right when Burr left, and so it felt like ridiculous that people were like la comics you're like yeah but bird is birds that like we knew yeah. pe like people that were there it was always it was ridiculous it's stupid but it was a dumb thing like you we just weren't communicating yeah, so you're like, yeah fuck those guys it's like the walled garden feel like you'd come to the store and there would be all the clicks and you yeah. wouldn't know who to hang out with you know it's always it's all high school it's always mm -hmm. high school high school just keeps repeating itself throughout your life but you can have a cool group of friends in high school yeah you know and that's what I try to cultivate. Yeah, just people you want to hang with. Cool group of friends. I figured out long time ago on the road, and I was trying to explain this to Fim, it's better to make less money on the road and then pay a guy who's good to open for you. Absolutely. And pay for his airfare in his hotel. So yeah. you make less money, but you'll have more fun. I, you have to have more fun. Fun is the whole thing. I'll add to that. I like bringing my friends who I like to watch because then I get to watch a show. Yes. I watch them in the middle and I go like, I'm, this is so fun. Yes. Like, and you get to go on laughing. Yeah. like You're already laughing. Dan St. Germain's one of my best friends and he's a hilarious comic and I bring him on the road and he just does little stuff that I'm just like, dude, that's so fucking funny. He'll get off stage and I'll be like, that line is so funny. And he'll be like, oh, thanks. When we filmed, because I am you know put out my special on YouTube, uh... Friday, March 1st, when we filmed that, I brought him because I was like, let's just keep this like a weekend. We're just going to film this like this is, because it was, I was just on the road. Yeah. And I was like, let's just film a show at a club that I love, Portland Helium. We'll just film it like it always is. And I get to bring my friend and then it's just like a hang. Yeah. It's like a fun hang that doesn't feel, because you know when you do special tapings, they can feel like... Everyone's like, are you going to do it? Right. Is it going to be good? And you're like, and you got like your managers there randomly. Yes. And it just doesn't feel like a show. Right. Filming it at Portland Helium with St. Germain and having like people around and just friends come through. Then it's just a show. It was like, oh, and then I'm like, I'm just going to put this up on YouTube yeah. for free. And Bam. this is great. And Perfect. this is exactly what I do on the road. Yeah. And it was like a fun fucking hang. And I think the club shows represent like a more intimate thing, which is what you're doing at home anyway, if you're sitting in your living room. Yeah. I think there's a disconnect. Like if you watch, like I've seen some guys do arena specials. Which is nuts because- Which is nuts. It's- uh, It's still are, great. Listen, arena shows are- It can be are, great. Arena shows are fun. Dude, I went and saw Nate at fucking State Farm in Atlanta. I'm not I, saying arena shows aren't fun. I love but here, arena shows. But here's the point I'm making is I went and saw Nate and live, it was an experience. It oh, was yeah. like watching one man in front of all those people just murder my friend, just being right. like, buddy, my wife, but it's just like <laughs> sending out waves. But, at, but so at home. Calm, at, with like minimal, yeah. minimal exertion, but maximal reward with the punchlines. If we were in the 40s, he would have had so many he would have been a Hall of Fame sniper in the army. With just how <laughs> calm he would have been, and he would have been like seven degrees that's, left. That's a great <laughs> description. And of then him. Nate, Nate would be like <clears throat> seven degrees right. I've never seen someone more calmly kill. It's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. And by the way, the way he kills, he his bits are stuff that are it's so organic and mm -hmm. from who he is. Yeah, that like you're like I've had multiple phone conversations with Nate, multiple over the years where we have talked about something and then months later that conversation is a seven minute bit and it's just destroying the room. <laughs> we had, cause we all used to hang in New York, uh, like around 07, 08 at Stand Up New York when Patrice, Patrice's manager Wayne Rada was booking it. So it was like Patrice was there, Attell, Big J, and then Nate, all these guys that I met, specifically Louis J Gomez and all them, are all from this time period. So you would have 
weird hangs like me, Lewis, and Nate. Nate had a bit that he did on Conan about his friend trying to fight staff members at a McDonald's because he took a bite out of his burger. That was Nate, Lewis, and I because we took a <laughs> bite out of Lewis's hamburger and wrapped it back up. And this psycho came back in and was like, oh, what's up? And started walking at the McDonald's workers. Oh, and Nate no. and I were like, no, 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 no. Dude, Nate was oh, laughing so no. hard he had to bail out of the McDonald's. And I had to get in front of Lewis and be like, it was us. It was us. And then six months later, Nate's on Conan murdering with a bit about it. Dude, I bought a cheeseburger once from Burger King and it had a bite taken out of it. That is an act of war. If it's not your friend, it's an act of war. I was driving home from training and I, I what got a bad the guy to pick. <laughs> a guy coming home from training. Uh, I was so sad. Yeah, I mean you have to I throw it so, away. I was so hungry. I ate it. You did, did you bite around it? Yeah, I was so poor. I needed the food. When I was a waiter, that's what I would do when someone. I worked in Midtown and they would like throw out this steak. We had a steak, mm -hmm. like, a, like a, and it was a, in little slices all the way down. Mm -hmm. And I would see how much they would eat. And then I would just go one over and be like, and that's mine. <laughs> and I just put that in a dish and I'd be like, and I got some steak. <laughs> that's uh, always the way to do it. When you're poor, when you're that poor, yeah. you're like, I'll eat around it. Yeah. I'll, I just ate it. I was so hungry. And but, I was but so it is sad. a bummer. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't try to go and tell them. So I took a bite out of my burger. I, I have to get home. I'm tired. Was that? I just ate it. Because I'm saying they picked the wrong guy. You pick me who just smoked a bowl. And I'll what am like, I going to do? Go in and karate kick people? Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I wasn't that type of guy. Dude, you could be like uh, show enough in, yeah. in The Last Dragon and go who fuck up. ate my <laughs> motherfucking <laughs> cheeseburger? When I say yeah. who ate my burger. Yeah, you could pick the wrong guy to do that to, though. You that, could pick a guy who just found out that his wife's been fucking his best friend and she stole $100,000 from his bank account and his boss just fired him and his... And then he is in a fucking <laughs> rage. That's... And he gets a cheeseburger, and it's got a bite taken out of it. And it's like, oh, okay, motherfucker. And then you pull in with that cheeseburger and just start laying people out. Yeah. You're, there's, you're there's describing like out there. You're describing what's going to happen to all these YouTube pranksters. Some of them are bringing big, giant security guards with them. Well, that's their thing now. Because there was a story about a guy... A, one of these pranksters that got shot he got shot in the stomach. Oh, I saw that and then the article came An article came out with interview with his dad shot in the stomach by an illegal immigrant by the way Yeah, but still a prank So quick to pull guns. I mean, where's he from fuck around with I mean he ran from something You know that that guy ran from something more dangerous than him. Yeah, maybe jail I mean, yeah, there's like maybe some ran guys from jail some some of these people you're like dude You don't want to fuck it's again the yeah. wrong guy you picked the wrong guy Yeah, you picked the wrong guy You picked the wrong guy by, by fucking pull his pants down just shot him in the gut Dude, there were there were old pranks people used because this is come in waves there was a like in the vine days People were doing pranks. Yes, and they were deep pantsing like black dudes just walking up and depancing black guys like in the hood and being like no 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 and the second they would like get swarmed on they'd be like no 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 it's a prank and there's one where a guy does it and you hear hit that gun hit the street and that prankster's like ah, 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 and the guy like picks up the gun and you're like dude when did you you could have been dead you could have been dead a hundred percent it's and by the way the the security guards are just going to make it worse because right. then you're going to get a guy maybe you have a guy that can fucking handle himself and he's not scared of your security. And now there's two or people getting hurt. the security guy gets shot first. Exactly. Yeah. And you're like, dude, that's... Oh, that's crazy, man. There's what people will do for attention. It's just nuts. But that's what... It, that's alien... Mm. Dude, it's alien weaponry. You might be onto something. They're coming from under the sea. Uh, here's the and thought. And they're giving us weapons. I'm all about USOs now, dude. Yeah. I'm all under about... Under sea UFOs? Uh, it's uh, un unidentified submersible objects. Mm. Yeah, that's where they are, dude. Yeah, they're at the floor. That's of what this. Cat Williams said. Yeah, we were talking about sonar. Hearing that just devices. touched my heart. Where I'm like, yeah. do we both have the same crazy theory? <laughs> he said, "Is this correct or incorrect?" Dude, I love that. <laughs> he was, we were talking about uh, space, about how we know more about space than we do about the ocean, which is true. And he was saying that those underwater listening devices were most likely so that they could uh, hear UFOs moving around. Dude. Because if they're really, imagine if they really are bases here's, under the ocean and they know about them. Well, here's the thing that if they know about them, fuck you, you should tell us. But here's what I think. Tell us. 
the theory I had, because I heard about, I, I listened to an episode of last podcast on the left where they were talking about USOs, and I got super into it, because I was high enough, <laughs> you know, when the song hits correctly, sometimes yes. the podcast will do that, right. and, and I was listening to last podcast on the left, and it hit where I go like, it unlocked, because they had this theory that, that they talked about, that the millions of years it took us to crawl out of the water and evolve into fucking liz- you know whatever we are like monkeys and then ne- neanderthals and then humans all that millions of years there were things under the ocean evolving for millions of years with technology and stuff and we're just up on the roof but yeah the problem is we've never seen anything other than us that manipulates its environment the intelligent things that we found in the ocean that are real are dolphins and orcas yeah and whales, but like and what about um, dolphins and orcas are crazy intelligent. But like octopuses too, yes, right? That's true too. Yeah. But but none of them, the octopuses are very smart. But none of them have ever figured out how to make things like make houses and cars and ships and it's it's all like they're out in the wild. There's no houses. I used to do a bit about uh, how dangerous the ocean is because there's no doors. I'm like, there's no doors. No, no. matter what, it's just there's fucking caves. sharks and crabs and no doors. Yeah. And everywhere you look, everything is eating everything. Yeah. It's literal murder soup because <laughs> they all eat each other. It's a ladder of eating. Yeah. Just everything goes up and, and eats something. And at the top, you have killer whales that are eating whales. They eat everything. But what if we're missing something what if we don't see it what if we are too stupid what if we're just like rock monkeys yeah and they're just like they can't see down here these guys have no fucking clue you know when you're in a tinted car and someone's like like yeah. looking in the window and you're looking at him like look at this fucking idiot he doesn't even see me mate what if that's us with the aliens in the water what if we're mm. like looking down there in the water and they're like these fucking idiots even when they come down here they can't see shit that's possible. It's possible that they also can be completely invisible. Like, yeah. We're really close to being able to do that now with stuff. They figured out how to like project what's behind things on screens. So you can, you can like have theoretically have a vehicle that as it's moving through an environment, it's projecting what's there. That's a predator shit. Yeah, like literally, that's that's a concept <laughs> that they're working on. They're working on it for air aircrafts. They're working on it for for vehicles. It's that's, terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> it's so terrifying. And that's just step one. Step two would be do something that alters reality around the thing so it's invisible. Yeah. It it, it like. So that's what. I, so you go into the ocean, and we're like yeah. down there, and we're so limited because yeah. we can't breathe down there. So we're limited. We're in like submarines, or we have robots, and it's yeah. just like a. It's just like a fucking ring. Every footage under the sea looks like a ring doorbell, where it's just like, and we don't know what the fuck. Yeah. They, could, we, they could be behind it, like these yeah. idiots. There's so little of it that we've explored. There's only like ten percent of the ocean floor that we've explored. Ten percent. That's so crazy. Ten percent, and then the thing that they always see you UFOs or USOs over water, it's like the high frequency that they see them, mm-hmm. and then they just fucking just down in there, and they're yeah. like, "Follow me, bitch!" And we're like, "We can't, we can't breathe." You know, space or the ocean, we can't breathe down there. We have a limited amount of room we can move around in. Just the idea of something being here the whole time is so creepy. Yeah, yeah, and then but us being. What's comforting is we're all so stupid we don't see it. Right. Imagine if you had a friend that's like, hey, <laughs> like if a couple people could see it, imagine, you would be terrified. Imagine if society had gotten to a point at one point in time where artificial intelligence and human brains mixed and we created a super class of, of species, like a new thing that's both technological and biological. Yeah. And only a small number of beings got that. I mean, you. And those beings, for some reason, left and left us here the way we are. Yeah. Like and I, that's what we're seeing with these aliens. Those are humans that went that went down the road that we're going down right now. And they were like, dude, we're going to get out of here. Yeah. And then maybe there was like all the disasters that happened, like the the, the younger Dryas impact, the asteroids hit yeah. and all that stuff and level society. But they escape because they're interdimensional travelers. Yeah. Now. They're like, we're going to get the fuck out of here. It's yeah. like leaving a house. You're just yeah. like, I don't care about this Shoot. house anymore. Now yeah. we're somewhere else. Shoot. They don't need food anymore. 
They probably work on nuclear energy or something. There's probably some they're, crazy power or source. Or like antimatter. Yeah, it's they, like a thing that we would never even think of. Yeah, they did don't you, need to breed. The thing that I, I uh, the Jimmy Carter brief. Did you you know about this when he yes. where, where they briefed him and it like broke him emotionally. Yeah. Where he was like so upset, where they were like, "Hey, by the way, yeah. they've been here forever." <laughs> like there, he was like a deeply religious man. Well, Tucker Carlson's talked about this recently. Really? Yeah, Tucker Carlson said that he believes that they've always been here, and he believes that it's probably, he, you know, he was talking about like good and evil, and yeah. that we all we know that good exists, and we know that evil exists. Sure, we know that people are capable of doing evil. Like th- these are real forces in the world. Yeah, and. There, so pe- what people are saying is that these experiences that some people are having with like benevolent ones, mm-hmm. that you're, this is the stories of demons. This is the stories of the Bible. Mm-hmm. That there's like, there's, there's races that are evil. There's alien races that don't give a fuck. Just like there's oh, yeah. praying mantises yeah. that eat hummingbirds. Or, like, like in nature. Just because just, just they're super there smart. Are, like, there are creatures that are aggressive, that right. are smart, like a hyena. And then there's like, Animals that are aggressive and just powerful, like lions. Like. And think about us, the smartest animal on the planet that we know of, and what do we do to chickens? Fuck them. No. Oh, those chickens. <laughs> I go, no, you don't fuck. Oh, God damn. <laughs> this is where, this is where my whole have. world unravels. I go, Joe, I fuck chickens, dude. I don't know. I didn't think you were going to get me like that. But yeah, it, it, there could be the the idea of benevolent aliens, of like, the idea that there are aliens that are yeah. good and aliens that are bad yeah. scares me so much more because yeah. you're just like, P- please leave me alone. <laughs> and like, good ones, bail me out of it. I mean, but imagine like if something became super intelligent, but in a more balanced environment. Like, instead of the way humans are so much more intelligent than everything else, yeah. what if there was other shit around that was pretty close to us? So you're saying, like, what if the food chain, the gap wasn't as big between one right, and two? Right, right. Would we ever- That would be a lot nicer to each other. Right, but would we ever get to this point? That's the thing. I think it, do, do, if, if it did, it would be a slower roll. Way but, slower, But right? I also believe that community and uh, empathy would be higher. If we had less of us, more danger. more of a threat. More of a threat. If if there were if there was like a, I tried this as a bit, but it never worked. If dolphins had legs, like if they just came out because they rape, and like if dolphins came out and just on land, yeah. and you'd be like, because they're so they're all muscle, yeah. So they would just fuck our shit up. Oh, they'd kill you. Yeah, yeah. a dolphin that could breathe. Yeah, and then oh, you're in trouble. Yeah, we're absolutely fucked. You're in trouble. Imagine if we're like be... so pro dolphin, but dolphins evolve legs and they just become the worst rapists on yeah. the planet. And they're like, what were you wearing? And you no, go, they rape your dog. They rape everything. <laughs> just everything. They don't give a fuck. They rape like, your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I They're got super me. intelligent. Yeah. They just fuck everything they find. Think of my Ultima got fucked by a dolphin. I'm going to be late to work. <laughs> they. Your emus laid out in the fucking yeah, garage. They're like, just, what? just like a tornado of rape. <laughs> it's just coming through and fucking a but town up. They also commit infanticide. What's that? They kill babies. So they got dolph- those Chinese anti NATO laws. What do they call it? Infanticide is like large scale killing of children. I think. I think I might have exaggerated that. But I think um, what they do is uh, when female uh, dolphins have babies, apparently they they won't breed for a long period of time while they're raising that baby. Sure, they're being good moms. And what male <laughs> dolphins would do if they have not had sex with the female dolphin? I hope I'm not fucking any of this up. They'll kill the babies to fuck the to mom. Force the mom into uh, breeding again. Force Damn. her back into estrus. That's so some trailer trash shit. The strategy that the female dolphins have employed is to have sex with as many male dolphins around her as she can, so that no one knows who's the baby. Yeah. So everyone's like, "That might be my kid." Exactly. Genius. Wait. Uh, reports that's like a- of infanticide, infanticide, and cessations have been quadrupled in the past decade, and now infanticide has now been documented in six species of toothed whale, including multiple populations of common bottlenose dolphins. Damn. Yeah. So if you're a grown dolphin, you've made it through a lot. You made it through a lot. You made it through a lot but of I, dolphins wanting to fuck your mom while I, you were a kid. If you, Dude, can't, I, <laughs> if you can't make a house, Dude, the world is rough. Do you know how different I would have been? I was raised by a single mom who dated. 
if all those guys had to kill me to fuck my mom, oh my do you know how God. dangerous I would be right now? Oh my I would God. Be, I'd be, be a, I'd just be a, yeah, I'd be absolutely dead. Be dead. I wouldn't you were have a made kid. it. I was also, I'm a, I was a little sweetie pie. <laughs> I was in a Kevin McAllister. <laughs> I'm not setting home alone traps. I would have gotten rolled. Dennis, I'll tell you the guy's name. That's hilarious. He, been, he was the first guy my mom dated after my dad. Dennis would have killed me. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, because he would have been like, "Wait, you're not gonna fuck when this when this kid's around?" And she's like, "He's not." <laughs> Just coming up that behind me with it. piano wire. I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah." I think for dolphins, it's like six years too. That's that times out exactly yeah. how old I was. I was maybe five when my mom started dating. That's so funny to think about them. I have to be like, my mom's like, "I'm going on a date." Just the whole day, I'm just like, where the fuck is he? Come get me, you son of a bitch. How weird is it we put those things in swimming pools? And pet them and... Ride them and shit. Yeah. Just tricks. tricks. Do a trick. I, uh, so I, weird. I went to the Atlanta Aquarium. They have a great aquarium, and I was doing shows there, and I went and um, went to the dolphin exhibit. And I thought it was funny, because these dolphin trainers are also scientists. Yeah. But then they have to dance. <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing. They're like... They know all this stuff about dolphins, but then they're like, "Hey, do a little, do a little routine and feed them a fish." And you're like, "How disrespected are you as a scientist <laughs> that they're like and fucking twirl around a little bit, <laughs> you know, oh, you know, yeah. and making these incredibly intelligent, wild, wild beasts of the sea do these dance? I'm surprised they don't snap all the time. Yeah, do they kill a lot of trainers? Killer whales do." They've killed a few. Yeah, that's when they there was bring one them down. they kept they kept using them because they, they're so valuable. A male killer whale, so he killed someone and they kept him around. Who's the guy that's next up on that? Ugh. Who's the guy that they're like? I think they sold them to another place. That's what you do because no one working there will be like. Yeah, whatever happened with that one? There was one in Sea World. So the four to, four fatal attacks by orcas in captivity. Tillicum oh. was involved in three, and he's the. So he killed three people. He's the one from Blackfish, right? Yeah, he bro, he killed three people. <laughs> Damn, he's got three bodies on him. <laughs> Why wasn't Tillicum put down? Um, Branchu's family and animal rights activists say they do not want to see Tillicum killed. Bran, how do you say that name? Branchu, Branchu, Branchu. Branchu's sister Diane Gross told the Associated Press that the trainer loved the animals like they were her children. It would not want anything done to that whale, even though it killed her. Yeah, um, yeah. Get over it, lady. The thing's a uh, thing's murdering people. Yeah, it just it killed your kid. If you're the like, family yeah. members of one of those you people, don't want that whale killed. Like, first of all. You should really let it go because yeah. you, you're you, you're holding it in captivity against its will, and it's a super intelligent, like behemoth of the sea. It didn't die till it had a lung infection. Damn, wow. it went down with emphysema. So where did it? Where did they take it? They moved it somewhere after it killed three people. <laughs> Just moved. You imagine in. working at that fucking place. And you go, who do we get? This is the killer where that's killed three people. We got Tilly. Started in Orlando. Moved yeah. to Victoria, British Columbia. And then back to Orlando. Wow. Damn. That's a long trip. He sired 21 calves throughout his life. So that's that what they want him for. He's come. They want his jizz. Yeah, they just want his, his hot orca whale because jizz. You're not, see, you're not allowed to capture them anymore. Yeah, wasn't that that show Whale Hunters all about that? Just like I don't know. I didn't see it. Oh, dude. It was wild. It was on Discovery, I think. And there was just these guys going out there, and they were trying to stop people from whale hunting. So they just like smash into their boats and shit. Isn't it crazy that they're saying you're not allowed to go capture them? Okay. Everybody would agree that's a good thing, right? Sure. But you're allowed to keep them and make them breed and make you more of them. That's like saying, like, no more slavery except for the slaves you have. And if they, and you can have kids with them, yeah. and those count. But no new slaves. But no new one. You can't That's go almost buy like saying. An, you can't go buy a new one. But you can keep the one you have right now and force it to breed. Like, if they are as intelligent as us. Yeah. But they just can't manipulate their environment. It's very similar. It's, yeah, very, like, it's like, not a human being, obviously, so we don't respect it and treat it the same way as we treat ourselves. But sure. Imagine if it was a human being in the same role. That would be insane. If there was a human being that had to live in a, in a swimming pool and, and do tricks and, and feed, if, like, if it's as smart as a human being. Yeah. 
You go insane. They don't know how smart they are. They really don't know. So you think they just feel crazy the whole time? They're 100%, just like, just out of their fucking, fucking mind. Fucking nuts. Out of my fucking how mind. How come I have to dance to feed, to eat? And you're trapped in a swimming pool. You're yeah. like, where's the ocean? But it'd just be like us in a room, like a pretty big room that you could run around in. And some of them are born in captivity. When this one was captured at two years old, it was put into one tank in uh, Iceland, and then it was transferred. And when it was transferred to the new tank in British Columbia, it was abused. It said. By two older female. Oh, workers. wow! They had to move it, to, or it, they. I says forced him into a smaller pool. That is crazy. Like, get him. out of here! Yeah. And he's like, "Can I go to the medical pool?" Wow! The trainers had to keep him in the other pool for protection. So he's probably isolated, just like a person who becomes a serial killer. Yeah. Abused, isolated. Yeah. No wonder he's yeah. killing people. Yeah. Because no he's wonder. trying to. He's, he's flailing to get out. He d he doesn't want to live like that. You and it, fucking asshole. So that's why he grabs a lady. That's like, I think we can get him up here. But that energy <sighs> of them getting like killed right before you go. Shut like, the <laughs> fuck up! <laughs> she goes, I I. Think I think we can get here. Yeah. Guys, if you clap, I think he'll come up. You feel that, like, that pull, that, like, animal strength of an orca whale, that has to be the most terrifying way to die because you are drowning, which is horrible. But number two, you're being forced down by a thing that's the size of a building. Yeah. Or not that big, but, like, it's the size of a Mack truck, and it's fucking holding you down oh. at the bottom of a pool. Oh. And you're just like, and you're just trapped in its teeth. Yeah, and it, so but it obviously doesn't give a fuck about you. But it's holding you in a way that you're like, eh, well, this is it. Rescue attempts were thwarted by the whales, who refused to let Byrne go, even after she was believed to have fallen unconscious in the water. Her corpse was later retrieved with a large net, after which she was determined to be deceased. Her death was ruled an accident. <laughs> it's murder. That was murder. So the whales were like at. They were keeping her there. They were high fiving after. The they were stopping attempt. the rescue attempts. Yeah, yeah. they dapped yeah. each other they up. They wanted her dead. After they were like, we got yeah. her. They wanted her dead. Yeah, that's so crazy. They're so smart, man. That, well, also was she the head trainer? The lady that got killed. Well, she was only twenty, and then I'm reading in the second one. This says that this the second one was a guy. Uh, they call him a vagrant. Snuck into the pool. Which, by the way, and Tillicum killed him. Yeah. By the way, well, you, that's you, on him. You yeah. sneak in, dude. That is the Ace Ventura moment where he's like, "Here's Snowflake. Here's Snowflake." See, and now all of a sudden, I'm on Tillicum's side. That in guy. A big way. That guy. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. That's on you. That's him. But I'm on Tillicum's side. Like, what are you doing? Why? Yeah. Why are we still allowing that? That's so crazy. That after, if anybody's watched that movie, the Orca movie, what is it called? Blackfin. What is oh, it? Blackfish. Blackfish. I thought you were going to say Free Willy. I yes. was going to go, I know, in the soundtrack. Or Blackfish, or have watched any of the documentaries, any of the YouTube videos that you could see about orcas in captivity. It's crazy that that's legal. Yeah. It's yeah. it's torture. Yeah, you're taking a thing that they're just like. It didn't do anything. And I, it's a prisoner. It's a prisoner for life. And it's also giant and yeah. needs space. Yeah. It it's needs insane. Spa I can't imagine feeling guilt free owning that place. It's literally like you being stuck in this room for the rest of your life. And then I come out and I do a sick routine. <laughs> and then I come back in and then you give me like cheeseburgers. And I come back in here and I go like, that new Batman bit's really hitting. Yeah, <laughs> then, like, like imagine. Yeah, you stuff my face and then finally I've just had enough of it. After years, yeah. years of daily of just that. Yeah. And by the way, absolute abuse. Because I'm sure orcas, they're smart enough that they don't always listen to commands. Like right. anything with intelligence. It's not 100% going to listen to commands. Right. Because right. it's got to think and sometimes it doubts and sometimes like, yeah. and then they probably were like abusing it. The fact that they killed her and that the other whales did look out like a fucking prison hit, would I, I would be like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't want to speak out of turn, but if I was her family. I'm reading back to Shamu because I, I was like, why did they call them all Shamu? Yeah. The first one, not the first, but it was one of the first ones was called Shamu. And this one had a, an incident too. It didn't, the, the woman didn't die, but. In which uh, she bit the legs and hips of Annette Eckes, uh, a SeaWorld employee who was told to ride her as part of a film publicity event. Shamu refused to release the woman until other workers came to the rescue and pried the orca's jaws apart with a pole. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. And she died four months later. Or the, 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 the whale, not the woman. Yeah. Oh, she's only conditioned to perform with trainers wearing wetsuits. So the problem is this girl got on with wearing a bikini. Because, by the way, it was 71. Yeah. So they were absolutely doing that like, 
why don't you give him a sexy ride? A right. sexy ride on Shamu. <laughs> Shamu loves sexy ladies. Yeah. And then Shamu was like, I am a devout Muslim. <laughs> He's it's like, fucking... get either, either get a burk on. <sighs> That's, I mean, dude. Skin like skin. Yeah. Get did... your dirty vagina off of me. Yeah, you fucking weird you rock monkeys Ew. touching me with your fucking Ew. land your skin. Feet. You got your feet your, on me. Your dry skin. She was only trained to do it with people wearing wetsuits. Yeah. So she had previously attacked people in bikinis before. And if you're like, if you're one of those guys that like is running that park and you're all sexed up on cocaine, on good <laughs> 70s cocaine, and you're like, yeah, baby, you can ride the Shimu. <laughs> you know? Then they're like, <laughs> like, hey, dude, I don't think you should put her on there. He goes, no, 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 it's a sexy ride. She loves sexy rides. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> he pulls up in his Trans Am. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you can ride the whales. Because back in the 70s, they didn't give a fuck about animals. They didn't give a fuck. 70s and 80s. Dude, one of Fair my coats, bro. Dude, uh, Milo and Otis. There was a movie called Milo and Otis in the eighties and nineties. What one is of, it? It's a movie about a puppy and a dog that love each other. Right. My favorite episode of Legion of Skanks ever is I wasn't even on it. Luis J Gomez talks about it, gets teared up because he loves the movie so much. I think he's drunk on the podcast. It's like if you watched it in your childhood, it sticks with you. It's a movie about a dog and a cat that from eighty six, and it's like. Aww. Yeah, it's about a, a pug and this cat and their friends, and they just go on a wild adventure through <laughs> wherever they're going through, right? Okay. And you're like, as part of my childhood, it's live action. I remember this being like, dude, this is such a sweet movie. You look up the animal abuse that occurred on this movie, <laughs> and it, I can't even watch this because it upsets me knowing there's, I think you can look it up. There was a scene involving a cat where they killed like, 12 of them to get this scene done because I think it was filmed in a country with like no animal rights like no at all and they were just like that scene that was the scene where the cats and the thing I think they lost like a bunch of cats oh my there was a scene God. where they had to make him walk with a limp and they were just breaking his leg oh that's what I mean you read about it and you're oh like my oh my God it, it once oh. they did that episode on skanks and then I read about it because I like was listening to the episode playing video games and I was like, I gotta look this up. It fucked me up. I like can't Oh my god. It's uh the animal welfare allegations. Yeah. Um okay, yeah. They probably aren't going into the details, but you can find the details online. But oh. it, they were like because you see it and you're like, oh, oh look at that. God. An animal and a cat, friends. Well, isn't that like the, the idea of like, if you ran like a, a billionaire pedophile business. Sure. All right. I'm with you. You did it through an animation company. Oh, Isn't yeah. that kind of like that? Well, the Nickelodeon thing where that guy got busted. That guy, Jay and I talked it on the bonfire before I left, but this guy at Nickelodeon, did all, he was like on remember the show head of the class he was I don't remember it. yeah this guy names his name's dan something and he was a, a higher up at at nickelodeon and it found out that he was just like um uh, like wildly abusing everyone like t feet pictures dude his pool at his house this guy dan schneider this guy his pool at his house is a foot <laughs> and he was accused of having like a crazy foot fetish if you have a crazy foot fetish don't make your pool a foot whoa yeah, invest. Yeah, there's a series. That's what it is. I learned all my shit from bad documentaries. The problem is, if you get busted for something like that and you look like that, everyone's gonna believe you did it. Yeah, but <laughs> you got pedophile face like a motherfucker. He's got that face yeah. You're like. Uh -huh. Yeah, some deviant it, shit. Yeah. You know who else had that? Was the uh, guy that did all the boy bands in Orlando, Lou. Um, Lou, what was his name? Lou Pearlman. Lou Pearlman, you're just like, yeah, you, abu you abused kids. Like, you see a picture of him? Bro, the best one is Jimmy Savile. Oh, my God, dude. That, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at, look look at him. him. Just a bunch of hot boys screaming. Like, they're all having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, and yeah! He's, he's just nutting. Oh, my God. He looks like a Philip Seymour Hoffman wore a fat suit and played an evil guy. It was on worse heroin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was on mean heroin. <laughs> look at him. Oh, my God. But Jimmy Savile was like... Um, the creepiest looking creep of all time. But by the way, he did shit that was like... In the documentary, I don't even know if they brought it up. Like, he would like... Fuck with kids that were dying, like 
on the step of death, maybe even past. Oh my, oh god. my god, that is Just evil. Look at him. He looks evil like man. A demon. And also, who wears a mesh shirt like that when you're all old and got turkey skin? A freak, a sexual yeah. freak. Oh. And he oh. had his own supply of kids. And he's yeah. sexually abusing these kids. And these kids are like, dude, I'm dying. I got fucking leukemia and I got to fuck this weird looking dude. But uh, imagine that other people knew. Yeah. And they protected it. That's the worst part. There's no way no one knew that he was fucking kids. No, it's like um, it's like the Sandusky thing in Penn State where right. there were like people that were like, kind of found out about it and then were scared that if they said anything they'd lose their job right and then you're like well yeah that's that's where the power comes in it's yeah. not necessarily a clean and cut thing morality wise i mean obviously it is i think you say if you see something you say but like those people kind of who are next to that kind of power mm -hmm. well they have that thing in them that they want to be close to that power yeah they have that like thirst to be close to that power so they're not going to say anything because if they say anything they're kicked out of the party and they don't want to get, you know, God. when in reality, guys like him should be hunted for sport yeah. by people. And then you put that on cable. Yeah. And, and I watch that. And you get really rich. Yeah. You get really rich yeah, hunting bad people. Yeah. And you go like, I want to see Jimmy Savile. Get Bro, imagine if we did have the ability to film things in HD from the sky where you never interacted. You could do the entire show. It's, com it's coming. And it's Jimmy Savile. Gets let loose, and one of those kids is eighteen now. Oh yes, and baby. He's got a battle and it's axe. and it's it's him and his dad, so it's like a bonding experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you get the guy uh, Larry Nasser Nasser from Michigan State. Yeah. I just watched that video of the dad trying to attack him in court. That'll fire you up yeah. when you see a dad yeah. be like, "Can I get a minute with him?" And the judge is like, <laughs> "You know, I can't do that." <laughs> he does that like move, and then he try yeah. he gets like this guy. Yeah. This and it's completely understandable. 100%. Larry Nasser is a piece of shit. What happened to that guy? Did he get so, in trouble? Yeah, this is it. By the way, shout out his daughters for being proud the entire time of him. They don't ever break. <laughs> they watch it and they're like, thanks, Dad. He just wanted to get his hands on Larry Nasser. It's my money that, that one recently. The guy jumped across and got dude, the Dude, that's wild. That one's wild. That, that guy got some air. Yeah, dude, that one, that guy <laughs> that got dude a full. Can fucking jump, man. That was a full Goldberg spear he in was, the air. That was not instantaneous. He was preparing for that. <laughs> did, you know, did, there's did no he back way. Pivot? Did he go like. Do you think he did like a. a, a no, test? he just went for it, man. It was so fast. There's a moment where you wonder if he goes like this. It was so fast. Watch how fast yeah. he moves. Here he is. Yeah. Gets her too. Yeah. You know what? Bro, whatever he prison, jumped over the whole desk. Whatever prison he gets put in, yeah. you're hoping there's a longest yard situation where you can use this guy on the field. <laughs> <laughs> that going, guy's gonna be a hero. Yeah, dude, he's gonna go in and be like, "Damn, you got her too," because he he got he got him. It was an arm tackle. He got her. Did you see what they did to him though? The next time they brought him in, yeah, they like muzzled him and kept him like he, Hannibal Lecter, like Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Show they, show how they brought him in the second time. Look at look at how they brought him in. Which you should have entrance music like a fighter. Look at this guy. Look at that. They gave him a net. They put. He's a... chained. His hands are in bags. He can't use his fingers. He's handcuffed and shackled. And they got seven guys around him. Yeah. Wild, man. dude. Look at his eyes. Fuck. But we, you know what? You hear that thing. That, imagine being him right now. But you oh, hear that thing no. where you, the, the judge goes like. Because I, from what I read, he was prepared to get like paroled. I think, mm -hmm. like that's where he was in his head. And the judge is like, "No, no, no, you're staying for like five more years." And he's like, "Fuck that shit!" Like that is such an instantaneous like, "Yeah, fuck this." What? Yeah. Like it, I don't know what he did. I don't know what you know what yeah. the situation was. But in that moment of being told like, "No, no, no, you're." Uh, he had, he had just been doing a speech. I remember hearing it. He said, like, he had not been committing crimes anymore. He is re rehabilitated. And she did. And she's like, nope. I don't think so. <laughs> and she then did the move. She did the, the Kembe Mutombo. And she's like, no, 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 no. What no. was he being uh, tried for? Like, what I'm, was he there for? Uh, convicted. Oh, hold on. I'll pull up the video again. So but dude, that. It says it. Battery. Battery. No way. Not that guy. No, 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 no. I mean, this is. <laughs> that guy doesn't have an aggressive bone in his body. Dude, but by the way, that is a fucking hell of a defense. Battery on a protected... Oh, that's the one we got for the... 
Oh, that's what that's he got what for he her. Got for the judge for jumping at the. But they they hit him with the book. Yeah, like, they hit him with so many charges, and it's a viral video. They have to put a stop to that. Yeah, it's like streakers, right? Like they're like they don't show him on TV, right? And then they when they do catch him, they're like, "We got to hit you with something. We got to hit you something big." I was at the Super Bowl, and they ran in the streakers that got there. Did you see the one guy bet on himself? Yeah, that's immediately what I said to Che when we were at the game. I was like, "Dude, those guys." Put a bet down that they would do this, and they're going to make a lot of money off this. That's pretty wild. Because why not? You'd be like, I bet uh, there'll be a streaker in the third quarter, and then you're like, I can affect that. That's pretty wild. My favorite's that all these betting sites now allow wrestling. As a lifelong wrestling fan, I'm like, come on, guys. That's hilarious. This is crazy. Like, you're watching Monday Night Raw, and they're like, Monday Night Raw, DraftKings. And you're like, what, this is How? fake. This is predetermined. How is, How is that legal? Do you, you guys are trying to ruin gambling forever? Dude, also, what do you, what, what's next? You're going to bet on Fast and Furious movies? Yeah. <laughs> you're be like, yeah, I bet Vin hits Nas in the first fucking hour of the movie. You're like, this is fucking wild. You're watching, you're going to bet on plays, on like Broadway plays, where you're like, you know, funny girl. I bet she uh, has a problem at the end of Act One. It's fucking ridiculous. It's so stupid. And I love wrestling, but I would never be like, oh, finally. My favorite thing was coming up with gambling for my friends when we watched the Royal Rumble. Like, you put money in a pot, and then you get numbers, and then that's your guy. But not, like, going on a, a app and yeah. putting down, like, a thousand bucks. Fuck that. That's well, I think guys get super addicted to that, too. It's gambling. Yeah, it's a hundred percent gambling. You ask, you ask, uh, like people that went to gambling, Gamblers Anonymous, like people that have been through the program through that, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, "Fuck heroin!" And well, they say it does the most damage. It does the most damage out of all the addictions. Heroin is a set price. There's no set price with gambling. You and by the way, the more you go up, the higher the high and lower the low. Yeah. So you're doing big, big bets. You're gonna, if you get fucked, you're fucked. Sure, if you yeah. win, it's amazing. But then all you do is you just want to go do it again. People don't walk away. It's like dealing drugs. Yeah. People never walk away from that shit. They never win. The house always wins. They're going to take your money. Always. Always. They're yeah. not. They have the smartest. Pe Dude, I had, I had a buddy when I first moved out east. I lived with my buddy Morgan in New Jersey. And he loved, he loved the taste. And this was like when you had to go to a bookie and shit. Ooh. So he was like doing some real gambling. He would get so fucking into it, but then he was right. He would yell this thing all the time when he would bet on the points and the points would hit to fuck him. He would be like, they're from the future. They're from the fucking future. He would like scream it if he lost like a thousand dollar bet on the Knicks. And you're like, yeah, they have the smartest guys working for them. Like they know how like to set the line. Like all those guys are fucking crazy smart. They're crazy smart and they use analytics. Exactly. You're going, I, you're going against Wall Street. Yeah. You're going against guys that probably could be making millions on Wall Street. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah, I think the Chiefs are going to win. Dude, the worst was gambling has got it, – it was in Vegas, so, you know, obviously there's more gambling. But the Super Bowl, if your team's in the Super Bowl, you fucking care. But I've been to two Super Bowls, and what I've learned is there's a lot of people there that don't give a shit. They just want to go to a Super Bowl. They're just at a Super Bowl. They don't care who the teams are. As someone who does care who the team is, it's a different viewing experience. Right. So the fourth quarter of the Niners-Chiefs game, I'm a diehard Niners fan. I am, like, sweating. I'm, like, Che and I are, like, punching each other in weird ways. <laughs> like, we're just like we're just like this the whole time. We're, like, holding hands. It's, it was fucking nuts. These fucking guys in front of us were just these, like, business CEOs from North Carolina. Uh, and as they got drunk, they, like... They noticed Che, because, you know, he's on SNL, so they, like, know a famous guy. So they kind of were doing that thing where they wanted to talk to us, but we were like, dude, it's a fucking Super Bowl. Like, right. we're watching the Super Bowl. This is big for us. We're 49ers fans. Can we watch this? And by the fourth quarter, the guy goes, yeah, I've got a parlay if Brandon Ayuk can get two more catches. And I just put my hand in front of his face, and I went, what are you? No, I don't want to talk to you right. He's like, he was turned around talking to me, and you're like, stop. Because uh, he thinks I care about his his bets. You're like, dude, right. I love this team. We are almost at the mountaintop. Shut the fuck up. Right. About It's like having a party over your house, and yeah. it's just the wrong person shows up and just camps out in front of you and starts talking to you. And you're like, do you not understand? No. And I give... 
too much of a shit about the 49ers because it was the only thing my dad and I shared. So I give like that oh, extra, extra, like this is connected. Like in a, Boston with the Red Sox. It's like, yeah, it, yeah it is. It's National a, identity. It's yeah. a disease more than it is an enjoyment. It's mm. like a thing like, I see that logo and I'm like, let's fucking go to it. <laughs> like, I just fucking care so much. And that's hilarious. They played <laughs> last season, they played the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. And all my friends are from Philly. Like, a, a lot of my comedy friends are Eagles fans. Big J, Vecchione, fucking Shane, Tommy. Like, there's so many guys I know that love the Eagles, but specifically Big J. And Big J's like, dude, I'm having a party. Come over and watch it. And I was like, no, I care way too much. I care way too much. And it was just him, Eagles fans, and then friends that didn't give a shit. And that's what I said. I was like, I know there's going to be one person that talks to me that I'm like, please don't talk to me right now. Yeah. But also, I'm the enemy over there. So then I watched it at home. Worst decision I've ever had in my life. Because I watched it alone, and I just went like crazy like an orca whale. Ah. <laughs> I was just like screaming at a TV by myself. I do that if I watch fights. Yeah. Yeah, if I watch a good UFC at home, I'm screaming. Yeah, because you especially if I shut the door. Oh my god, it's shut pure enjoyment. Just it's like yeah, it's the sports viewing equivalent of walking around your hotel naked. Yeah, you're like no one can come in here. This is my room, and I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want right now. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And if you're if you're live and you're screaming, it just seems normal. But you want one <laughs> other person there. You want yeah. a person. All I had was my dog, and she didn't understand why you were yelling. <laughs> why I was so fucking hyped up. And when Brock Purdy's elbow got injured. She just saw me spiral in a way. You know when dogs can tell you're anx anxious or whatever? Yeah. She's just like slamming her body into my leg and shaking. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's all right. It's all right. We're fucking still in this thing. My dog is so sweet that he he freaks out when there's violence in movies. Oh, really? We're watching movies together. We're watching this new Netflix show. What is this new Netflix show? It's a Korean series about uh, people that get infected and they become monsters. I don't know. I think it's called Sweet Home or something like that. Sounds badass. It's fucking great. It sounds. It's it's a fun show. Yeah. Fun show. But there's some violent moments where the monsters get people. Oh yeah. And, and the, the dog is like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> he gets up and he starts spinning around. Yeah, That's called Sweet Home. Dude, that is fun show, man. Dogs that, having anxiety about stuff bro, they don't like, understand. What's going on? He got a toy. He's like bringing the toy to oh, me. Fuck, I'm like, man. dude, it's not real, man. Yeah. It's not real. Dude, my dog. Whenever whenever a dog comes on the screen. Cause she's a oh, panda. Yeah. She's like, "What the fuck?" Like someone's in her house. <laughs> like we'll just be chilling there, and then she'll try to like. Shane came over and was hanging out. It was the first time he met Myrtle, and I think my dog was like trying to impress him. Cause she, most of the time she'll look up and be like, bah, bah, and you're like, "Shut the fuck up." But this one, she was like, like ran to the TV. And we're like, "You're not big. Stop acting big." Yeah. That dog was in this room. It would fuck your shit up. <laughs> Also, she only barks at cute dogs. If it's like oh, a hellhound or something, she's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> she's just completely passing over it. She's like, nah, I'm not fucking around The first that. time Marshall saw the American Werewolf in London, he barked at it. Yeah. Oh, in there? Yeah. That, yeah, that thing, if you're a dog, yeah. that has to be terrifying. Yeah, he saw it. He just went, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Is he cool with it now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He knows it's not real. All right. Yeah. But that first time, he's like, what the, the first time, he's fuck? like, whoa! And he hardly yeah. ever barks. Does Carl, is Carl? One of his first barks ever, I think. Carl yeah. saw it and yeah, was like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> you make noise? Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, cool. Dude, that is great that you have a dog that you don't know if it barks or not. Marshall never barks. Dude. He'll he'll bark if he wants to come inside. Like, if someone leaves him outside for a bit, and, yeah. he, and he comes to the door, he'll bark. We, but he'll like one bark. No, we like uh, mom. Yeah, no, <laughs> dad. We, <laughs> someone's here. Yeah, we, dad. We wrote it. We were like, because we got her during the pandemic, so everyone was inside in New York, and so we we're like, don't bark. We live in an apartment. Shut the fuck uh -oh. up. And then, hilariously, uh, Katie and I left the dog with her parents in Boston. Oh no! And we came back, and the and the, the dog's barking, and her mom rules, and her mom just in a Boston accent goes, she barks now. And you're like, well, no, I don't think we want that. We still, we've tried hard not to do that. Oh, no. And now she'll just like, she'll pop off for random shit. Like people in the hallway. Oh, no. Because we live in a, a big building. Right. So someone will be out in the hallway and she'll be like, bruh, 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 and just that. And then it's the little grumbles. The, bruh, 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 bruh. <laughs> Fuck mm. it. God damn it, dude. I'm so jealous you can go everywhere with Carl. 
I wish I could bring my fat little bitch everywhere with yeah, me. Yeah, Carl could go anywhere. Carl would just sit in your lap. Yeah, Carl's just like especially you. if you time it right. Oh, Jamie, you get to get so evil if you want to, and then you can just have like a dog where you're like, that is correct. <laughs> yeah, man, I fucking having a dog was the greatest thing about the pandemic. Was we got a dog, and it has made my life. It just rules. Dogs are amazing. It just absolutely rules. They're amazing. I, They're I had fun. one growing up, and then I just didn't forever. And I was always like, no, nah, I loved seeing dogs. But then having one, you're like. You know what's really <sighs> funny? I always try to attribute human thought to the dog sometimes. Yeah. Like, I'm like, one of these days he's going to get bored chasing this ball. Nope. <laughs> There's not a chance in hell. Every time I have one of those uh it's like a, a stick with a scoop on the end of it that the ball oh, goes yeah, in. Oh, you get so to highlight really that it. shit. Yeah, you highlight the shit out yeah, of it. You got a fucking dog it's highlight. Nice. It's nice. It's fun. Yeah, uh, you can get that thing going. He fucking loves that thing. When he sees me pull that thing, he's like, oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I videotaped it because it's so silly. He's like bouncing around. Oh, Jesus. Dude, we do it every someone, fucking day. If someone controlled my PlayStation intake and then just pulled out a controller, I'd yeah. be like, oh, yeah. oh. Are we gonna play Rocket League? Huh? <laughs> I get so I fucking guess pumped. That's what it is, yeah. right? Because you never don't get pumped to play a really good game. No, nah, dude, right. Spider Man Two. I'm so excited that they're coming out with like <laughs> DLCs coming, and I'm gonna go home and be like, "That's me." I'm like Marshall with the toy. Hey, like, have, have you fucked around with VR at all? No, nah, I don't like that shit. Let me explain why. Old school pothead love to be very high. I like controllers. Right. What I got was a Steam Deck, which is like. You know the Nintendo Switch? Mm -hmm. It's like that on steroids. Ooh. And it gets games like really good games for the road. It has made it, because I've fucked with everything from Game Boy on, and having a Steam Deck, I'm like, this. I got it for Christmas. I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever had. I had to draw the line with uh, video games. When we had, we set up a LAN. Uh, yeah, at, you get back that. At the old studio. Yeah. And I got the bug again. Oh, bad. Yeah. Where I was it like, is, I mean, it is. Running in there to, to play Quake. Yeah, turn your brain off. Couldn't wait. Yeah, turn and, the. But always feel like shit when you leave. Like, what the fuck did I just if do? You got to do it in like um, small servings or, or like there has to be a purpose to it where you're like, you're done at this moment. Because if you can go, that's where it's. That's where you get sick. It's as if you can just keep going until, like, you need an ending point. Like, that's why I like Madden. The game ends. You're like, I played two games. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I should walk away from this. With Quake, you could play death matches where you have, like, you know, five, six guys in oh, a room yeah. and you're all killing each other. And you respawn and it gets up to a certain amount of deaths. Oh, dude, I, uh, I've, I absolutely love video games. When I moved to New York, I was like, I'm done with them. And then six <laughs> months later, I was like, where can I get a cheap Xbox 360? <laughs> I need to plug back in. But yeah, I mean, Shane and I on my podcast were just talking about NCAA college football is coming out, and we're, I think, going to plan a vacation around playing it because it's a game that hasn't been out since 2014. How does the new Apple, uh, what is it called again? Vision Pro. Vision Pro work. Does it work? Would, I know it works with movies, yep. but does it have to be everything from like the App Store, or yep. could you play like PlayStation on it? Yep. You, you can, can play PlayStation? Yes, there's a way I've seen people connect, which is actually look. I'll, I'll find the video of it. You know how so, that environment. If you could do that, then you're watching augmented reality PlayStation. So you're that's seeing the way to get me a in VR. screen. Yeah, you're seeing a screen that's like fucking thirty feet wide, and you're on the field. Yeah, dude, I would love to be. And I you mean, got a remote controller, just like you do with your your regular game. You know. I grew up with the Miami Dolphins coach, Mike McDaniel. It'd be fun to play Madden and just be standing next to him in VR with a controller. <laughs> I'm like, run the goddamn play, Mike. Dude, I fenced with Mark Zuckerberg, and we, we weren't anywhere near each other. He was on one side of the room, like 15 feet away. Wait, you did this? Really? Well, this is the best example I can show you is that, like, they're playing Red Dead Redemption Red 2. Red Dead Redemption on a big screen, but this is the Yosemite environment that the Apple headset puts you in. I love that. Oh, so wow. Like, so the sky is oh, dark. Because here's the thing. Red Dead, yeah, Rockstar did such an incredible that. job. That's insane. That w I would shit. And by the way, there's scenes where you're out. how big it is, too. You're, it's there's your entire field of view. Yeah, and you can look around and just see. That's about the most you could do right now. But, but that must be amazing when your entire field of view is taken up by the game. And oh my God. in moments like this, like Red Dead, there's moments where you're in like, the desert or where you're in like... A rainstorm up in the mountains. 
here's change that though. Here's the question. Yeah. Here's the question. Can you play Quake on that? <laughs> Dude, you know what it is? You're like one of those people you go, I don't party anymore. Wait, and then like two yeah. hours later so you go, You got it from Peru? <laughs> <laughs> you go, I'm just gonna do a gummer. This is look how flaky it is. You go, is saw, that pure? I saw your reaction to those screens in there. Yes. The big fifty five inch screens. Yes. I have one of those at home yes. and I try to play Call of Duty on it. Yes. There is too there is a level of it's too big. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. What do you I, mean it's too big? It just like, gets too Have you too ever sp- played a, like Call of Duty in front? Like, have you ever gotten really close to the screen to play? Yeah, when like, we when we moved in to our apartment, we put uh, the wrong TV in the bedroom, and uh, Katie plays Call of Duty, and she she was playing video games. She's like, "This is too much. This is too much," because the screen was like fucking mm. on it. So we we were like, "Oh yeah, we switched it out." I remember back in the Quake playing days that guys didn't like some guys didn't like monitors that were more than twenty one inches. They wanted it right in front of them. For, so that because you know you're moving your mouse right and the oh, mouse damn, speed. I didn't know I didn't know Quake was a keyboard. Yeah, mouse keyboard game. and mouse. That's like some real shit. Real shit. That's the real shit. That's the real shit. That's the scary shit. That's, that's like that's, um, you get really good at the movement with the key the keys and you get really good with your cursor and you know how to jump and and, and every time you hit the space yeah. bar you're jumping. Yeah, that's like Counter Strike. People used to be into Counter Strike, which Quake is like is really fast. Yeah, the thing about Quake is it's not like it's superhuman speeds. You're moving at superhuman human speeds with rocket launchers oh, hell and you yeah. can instantaneously change weapons you you rocket someone in the air and you electrocute them to death it's insanity You've if got, you could do that like that on that kind of a screen i don't know but i'll tell you what i'm looking up quake 4 on my steam deck it's when uh, i get to my hotel it's a keyboard mouse like you really want a keyboard and a mouse yeah, it's tough. It's, yeah. you, you don't want to fuck with it with the, it, it, you need really precise movement Find like a good well, one with good graphics. The thing I'm trying to show you is how f- close some people put their face to their screen. That and yeah, that does they get right up on that. So because you can, I would imagine if you're controlling a 21 inch space. Yeah. Um, and you are very accustomed to moving your cursor around a 21 inch space with your mouse, right? You're moving it around. You're very precise. If you stretch that bitch out to 40 inches or 45 or 50, you're like now, now you're doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that does matter. Oh, so it's all it's all in one field right of vision. there. You you really want it like a 21 inch monitor, 20, I think. 24 to 27 is the sweet spot. That's it, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Like Damn, right there, a, bam, there bam, is... bam, bam, and then you got to get glued onto that screen yeah. because you don't want to go back and forth the screens. It's going to fuck with your timing. Yeah, you, you need something that's consistent. While. Yeah, you need to consider those guys are fucking freaks with their mouse sensitivity and the weight of the mouse. Yeah. They add weights to the mouse. That's they take funny. weights away. Some of them like lighter mouses. They make mouses that are hollow to take as much weight out of them as possible. So these guys make custom. Gaming mice. 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 Go find the, the lightweight gaming mice. They they literally, like, you know what they do with race cars? Yeah. They, they like, take everything out, <laughs> anything that weighs anything. They drill holes in the door handles. They do that. Those Look at these mice. Hybrid, dude. Look at that. They're, they're like skeletons. This one's, there's $170. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh dude, there's, by the way, some of at, them are more than that. It's at Ponage. <laughs> I love some that of them it's are called, more than that. I love that it's called Ponage. Yeah, dude, 495 bucks. See that one in the lower right-hand side? Yeah. It says uh, Euro Gamer, Jamie. The right-hand middle. Yeah, Oh, that right one. there, that lightweight that one, in the middle row? That's my style. Damn, dude. Like. And so what you're hitting, because I know you're, are you using the wheel on the top? I use the wheel to switch weapons. Sometimes I use the reel, uh, I'll use the reel for a rail gun. So when I know I want to hit the rail gun, I just turn the wheel and it turns into the rail gun instantly. So I have keys pressed that are all set up exactly for each weapon. I feel like a cokehead talking to a crackhead. Yeah. Like, here you go. Like, right, right I do key. blow and you go, I smoke it out of glass after <laughs> it's a rock. And I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah, right key is all rocket launcher always. 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 Keep that thing right on rocket launcher. Right key is rocket launcher. Left key is fire. And how long the games last? Like you said, they're fast, but like five minutes fast or like? Well, they'll, there's a timer. Okay. So like if you're having a one-on-one death match, They'll, you'll set a timer and it'll count you down and then it'll say fight and then you're, you're just running through the corridor picking up weapons trying to pick up armor and then dudes know where you're at because they can hear you because they can hear your footsteps and you're grunting as you're running and so you're running through these corridors. And it's always one on one. Always. Well, you can no. You can do multiple death matches where you just have a fucking melee. Yeah. Where there's dude. like thirty dudes just killing each other. Royal and you keep Rumble. respawning and they kill you. It, those are fun. Those yeah. are really fun. But um, the, the the way to do it, like one on one death match style, is the yeah. real way to do it. Do you those have a friend? Duels. 
Do you have any friends that if you picked Quake 4 up, you could call them and be like, we doing this? I wouldn't do that to them. I wouldn't do that to them. It's you wouldn't too, bring that back in their life? It's too immersive, man. It's too good. It's too good. And if you have responsibilities. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, no. I mean, dude, I do my responsibilities. Yeah. Look at this. Put, this, oh, is yeah. this is quick. So it's kind of similar to Fortnite, right? Look how fast this motherfucker's moving. So he's shooting the rail gun. Now the rail gun kills games. you instantaneously. The rail gun is like wherever you point at, oh, and they you got, hit. You got that doom view. This yeah. is like doom. Look at this. And you're running like insanely fast. Look By how the fast way, this moves. Man. I love... It's fun to watch the camera on the guy because his face is doing nothing because he's so concentrated. Yeah, and you can see how he's switching weapons. Yeah. That's right. Now he's back with the rail gun. He's got a rocket launcher. He's just flying around. Are they? Yeah. Shotgun. They... Boom. Shotgun. Killed that dude. Now he's got the rock. Oh, that was the rail gun. This is the rocket. That's the rail gun. That's so the he... rocket launcher. So he's just hopping around. Do they do like pro tournaments of this? Fuck yeah, they this do. This is uh, the finals. This is the top two guys. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So see how he keeps running back to these spots? That means the weapons are respawning. Yeah. So every time you snatch a weapon, you have a little bit of time. Boom. Fuck that. Damn. Okay. All right. This is the closest we've seen. Now they shoot rail guns at each other. So a railgun is like an instantaneous death unless you're really armored up. Did he kill that guy? It's 11 no. to 3, no, so whoever Liquid RPH is. He is... fucked that dude up, but that dude had to run and get some more shit. So he had to run and get health, so now he knows where he is. He's Now he's chasing him. Boom, How good did you get at this? I got decent. You got decent, but yeah. you would get on and then see some guys. No, I get fucked up. Because there's games, up all the time. when you play online games, you'll yeah. go against people and you're like, oh, you're at a different level. You don't have the time to compete with some autistic dude <laughs> who's on ADHD medicine. <laughs> Yeah. Dial doesn't in. have a job who gets a government <laughs> check and he's just rocking people online It's like that South Park where they yeah. play World of Warcraft and their their villain is that guy. It's like <sighs> Those wrist brace on those guys get good and their identity Wraps around their their whatever their name is and they're going out fucking people up There's certain guys that you would see on a server and you're like, oh, no, really? Yeah, you have a, a match with them You just get killed like yeah. 100 to nothing. Do you get that thing where you're like stop? Oh, yeah, you get panicky. So you're like enough. running into walls trying to find armor. <laughs> Boom, do they, getting blown up again. Do they have videos of them freaking out? Because that's something I like to see is like that was sort of gamers like, spazzing yeah. and being like, what the fuck? Oh, there's a lot of those on Twitch, right? That's great. Yeah. That's, it's almost better than sports fans losing it and punching TVs. Well, it's so crazy, and you can do it anytime you want. So you could have a match anytime you want. That's too tempting. Online with real people. Anytime yeah. you want. You log in. You see a server, you join the server, boom. Yeah, you're in it. There's one on one death matches where there's people waiting. So you'll you'll look, you'll find a server, you're like, one guy's waiting. Death Slayer sixty nine is waiting. And he's just like and and you spawn and they'll start talking shit. And you're like, oh, fuck you, bitch. And you got the keyboard yeah, so you can talk quick talk shit. shit. Fuck you, bitch. Do we no, have they... to? Uh, we'll play online Rocket League or whatever, which is like car soccer There's and it's fun. He's yeah, like, yeah. About to rage right here too. Yeah, right. I rage a lot at Rocket League. I, what is this? I played this for years. It's like soccer. With... It's soccer with cars, yeah. which sounds, dude. It is so addictive. We oh, get wow. online at night, and uh, Katie and her brother Kevin are both really good at it, and I'm like. I get too intense and I'm like, fuck, fuck. And I'll like miss the ball and be like, fuck, and I like rage out. But you'll play guys that you're like, oh, this guy's too good. Like he'll hit it in the air and then just like over you, just score a goal and you're like, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, there's tricks people can do in Quake. Like yeah, that's what I mean. Like guys that get so good at it that you're like. Guys rocket jump. What when is you that? rocket jump, so if you, you are fully armored, so yeah. if you have 200 armor, you can point your rocket down at the ground and jump at the same time as you pull the trigger and you go flying. Oh, that's genius. So you can rocket launch and rocket jump up to like a platform and, and then, then just, hide oh. and then just start picking bitches apart. <sighs> And so everybody that walks in, you got the rail gun, you got your cursor pointed yeah. right at the doorway, and every time people run in the doorway, boom! Oh, out, dead. respawn. Dead. That's how it is when I watch dead. people play Call of Duty. I'm like, oh, you're just picking people off. Just campers. Like, bow, bow, people get bow. very mad at campers. Yeah, dude. But it's a fucking, st look, you're going to get strategy. mad at snipers in a war? Shut the fuck up. The That's the part of the war. <laughs> Were you mad at a sniper? Snipers are cheating? <laughs> well, well, Stop like, camping. He's yeah. like, I'm a sniper. Was cheating big back when you were playing? Oh, yeah, there's bots. Yeah. So they, they would hide, they would like. People would program, uh, there was different bots, and one of them was an aim bot. Yep. So that what the aim bot would do is you could never miss. 
Yeah. So if you you just with a regular stupid gun, yeah. like that only does like you know ten points of damage every time it hits you. Like, you get a pistol when you start. Sure, you're, you're minimally armed. That's why you're very, going around getting the guns. Right. It's very difficult to kill a fully armored guy with a pistol. Sure, or a rifle or whatever you get. So then you have to run and grab armor. You have to run and grab a la- rocket launcher. It's like it's like right. a super. Uh, what are those sweepstakes? The superstore mm-hmm. sweepstakes where they're like, go! And you're just like yes. going through. You're being just like, running through, <sighs> trying to gather up as much shit. And you know the map. Everybody has maps memorized. Yeah. So they know when things are spawning. And some of them even have prompts that tell them, you know, health spawns in 30 seconds. Yeah. So every time they pass over armor, armor respawns. And they have it all listed on the map and they're running around. And the guys would have these aim bots and they could never miss. So they would kill you, that and every sucks. time they kill you, they would be fully armored, they'd have all the weapons, and then they'd know exactly where you were going to be, and, and then they would kill you again, and they'd kill you again, and kill you again. And you couldn't, you, every now and then they would die, and they would respawn, and they would kill you again, because they couldn't miss. I, I would love to just talk... Is this an aimbot? Oh, this, well, this is this is all sorts of uh, at the beginning of this video which you were talking. This is Call of Duty. Yeah, it shows you God, like, that's fast the too. cheats you can buy and how you you can subscribe to them per month. Oh, so you oh, pay a company and cheats? they give you all yep. that shit. Yep, oh, yep, that's crazy. Cheats. Oh, that makes me mad. That's crazy. But, and how do you prevent that? You, you don't. Bro, Call of Duty is a lot quicker than I thought it was. That's fast as shit. Yeah, this dude. game gets very fast. When they do multiplayers, there's one That's game. That's almost quake like. Yeah, there's one. There's one level where they're doing like uh, storage units that I watch. Yep. Shipment. Yeah, shipment. That's what it is, and it's like nonstop. Like you just like turn a corner, you're dead. Shoot, dead. Whoa. Like that fast. Whoa. But when I I remember one time laser tag back in the laser tag days. Laser tag. I camped. One time, laser tag camping? I camped at laser tag. <laughs> I just sat by the charge station, and every time someone recharged, I'd be like, <laughs> I just like, uh, and then do my stats. We all went. You know how you go out in the lobby and they show yeah. your stats. My stats were like, I'm surprised I didn't get a call from the military. It was like 700. I had like 300 kills. It was something wild because I was just sitting there. I was like a shitty little nine year old. Just you know like, what you want to do? What you want to do? The zombie experience at Sandbox. What is this? Sandbox is a VR game place. Okay. You go and you there's a thing called Deadwood Mansion and then there's a new Deadwood something. So you go to a place to do yeah. VR. They have two zombie games. Yeah. Okay. You put on the headsets yeah. and you are in a house. You are in this house that's getting stormed by zombies. Yeah. And everyone has something. You either have two pistols or you have a shotgun or you have a <sighs> rifle. And then so then you're Listen just Listen to me. Get the shotgun. Okay. The shotgun is overpowered. Sometimes they fuck up when they make a game. Yeah, they got to nerf a weapon. The shotgun's overpowered. The shotgun kills everything. The shotgun is the weapon. And you just stand there and you it. You just cha cha boom, <laughs> cha cha boom. But you, you're I'm in a safe room, so you don't in run. Zombies, bro. So, so you don't run into a table or anything. Yeah, they well, got you, you run into the, your friends too sometimes because you're you're all together. You can see each other though. Oh, so I if you bump into you. You, like, so literally, I would see you with your armor on. I would know where your space is. And we would all be moving around together. and so. But sometimes you bump backs into each yeah. other. But there's zombies coming through the ceiling. <laughs> They're storming at you and clawing at you. You see red in front of you when they get you. As someone that has sworn off VR, this is the way to get me into it. Which Dude, is saying VR zombies. It's so fun. Because it's, it's got to so be fun. scary as shit. Yeah. At one time, I had the number three score for this Deadwood Mansion game. Just sitting there. I was there, like, just what? Because like, I got the shotgun. Did you feel it, though? Because like, one of the dudes that worked there told me, get the shotgun. I was like, really? He goes, yeah, get the shotgun. Yeah, because like, you show up, man. he goes, hey, Joe Rogan, get the shotgun. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking like, overpowered. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's really fun. It's yeah, a crazy game, dude. But it's that's crazy. What the VR does to video games is it just heightens the emotional impact that it yes. has on you because it's sensory it's like kind of yes. like deprivation tanks but like it's just putting all the senses into that yes because like i was obsessed with this game friday the 13th that they made back on ps4 and you would either be a counselor or jason and it's just <laughs> all online dude it's fucking wild it was wild i uh... i loved it but I, what i would do is i'd smoke a fucking doink i would smoke a <laughs> giant joint and then i'd turn off all the lights in my apartment, and I would play Jason, and it's like it's scary because you. St- it, this is the guy as Jason, but you go around and you hunt. See, see the uh, counselors inside. Oh my you god, can, you're hunting counselors. Yeah, and bro, dude, it is. Movie. 
It, and that's the phone box. That's how you call the cops. He's got setting a trap. He's a decent Jason. I still play it sometimes, and I, I got it. I'm level he 150. He set a trap at the. So Jason is smart. Well, you can set. It's you. It's all strategy. It's you versus these counselors. Right, but Jason can set traps. He has uh, five bear traps and then five throwing knives. Doesn't that seem unrealistic that Jason would know how to set? Yeah, traps? he's a stupid mutant that drowned in the lake. Yeah, he's dead. He's, he's a, dead. A monster. But shouldn't be that smart. This game fucking. Traps. You get so scared. Dude, you get so scared when you're like, because when you're a counselor, you're just like walking around. You're like going through drawers trying to find weapons or whatever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's just like in the background, it's slowly like, ch -ch -ch. and then when Jason shows up at when you're at a cabin, he'll smash the window and it's like, yeah, yeah. And if you have headphones on, you're like, oh my get God. the fuck out of here, <laughs> dude. It's, I, I'm getting all goosed up. I'm going home. I'm playing Jason. If the servers are still up, I'm fucking back on it when I get home. I have not seen it, but I have heard legend of this alien game that's on VR that's supposed to be insane. Like Alien, like you the get abducted? first movie. Oh, oh, Alien. Ridley Scott, Alien. Yeah. There's an Alien game. I just watched this Prometheus. Is, this is true? The, I, I want I want to I want to make sure this is true because well, someone told me that it's a terrifying game that you can play on VR that's based on the first alien <sighs> recently or, I just went no, through an they alien told kick. me this they told me this at least a year ago maybe more that uh probably more than a year ago do you think we see in the future do you think we see things like heart attacks and shit from VR is it already happening like people getting so scared that it hurts them in real life well, I think if you're really vulnerable and your heart gets jacked up to like 190 beats a minute, especially if you have one of those guys on those omnidirectional um, treadmills they have now. Oh, really? Dude, they have a surface. This is a new surface that it's a contained surface, like yeah. a contained space. And whatever direction you walk in, it moves. Oh, so it does like the topography of like... No, no, no. It just stays oh. flat. But every you can go left and right, and it goes left and right. And if it goes... You back up, it backs up with you. You stay in the same spot, but you're <sighs> walking around. And it somehow or another registers through the headset into the flooring which direction you're going, and it compensates for that. They're going to think we're such idiots in the future when they're like, you're just holding a controller and playing. But do you know what kind of good shape you, you would get in? Disney updated this. It's not available <clears throat> yet, but they've made one that's now they've shown it this year. Here's what you do. You put ankle weights on and you put a, a weighted vest on. Yeah. And then you play one of these gun games that's like really intensive, get and you jacked. get that, and you get and you're walking around with all yeah. that weight on. Yeah, Bro, that's a fucking workout. Also, what they should do is, you know, we got those trillions of dollars going around in our military. The military probably has something like this developed. One hundred percent. They're with Boston Dynamics. Bro, they're probably laughing at this. Yeah, they go. You, you want to see our robot take yeah. down a, a fucking village in Colombia? The alien game I found, if this is the correct one, is uh, a like a, someone made the actual alien game and they made like a VR port of it, if you will. So like they've sort of hacked it so that it works in VR. Oh, I really? Think, I don't know that's it. the official. I think that must be it. But dude, that alien. Must be it. But what I heard is it's <clears throat> fucking terrifying. Yeah, because you can get scared as shit. I mean, I got well, scared as shit of that Jason movie. game and I knew what was going on. But that one movie was scarier because oh. there was only one alien It was smart. It was great. They kind of fucked that up in the second one because yeah. there was a bunch of them and they were kind of easy to kill. Like, and what happened? And they also just threw it in. They were like, and yeah. we're on the ship, we're on this planet, here you go. There's a ton of them. I never bought the second one. It's a great movie. I like, love it. All by itself. Did Aliens you watch, did is you a like, great movie, but it's not the same thing as the first movie. That first one was smart as fuck. Yeah. It was smart and clever. It would wait for people and hide. It, like, it knew how to get around you. It knew how to like a attack you when you weren't looking. And the second one, they're and the little mouth. Yeah, <laughs> was the little mouth in the second one where it came out? And was oh, like, they always come out right here. They yeah, come out of there. The little the tongue. It's like a mouth, and it gets you right in the head and sucks your brains out. Did you like Prometheus? Yes, I loved it. I just watched it. I did. I loved it. The I, ending, I loved I, the idea. I had a problem with. I loved the idea. I had yeah. a problem with the ending because she escapes on this. Spoiler alert. Yeah. She escapes yeah. on the on the spacecraft of the architects, like the big right. humans that made us. Yeah. And she's going back to their world. Like that she sets the course to be like, nah, fuck this. I'm gonna go where these people are from that made us and made the the animorph, made yeah. the made the alien. Yeah. And it just leaves you. Just leaves you high and dry. Where yeah. you're like, where'd she go? Uh, show me that shit. Yeah. I wanna see what planet all these architects are living on.
The last one was really good. Alien Three. What was no the Aliens last? 3? What was the last? Covenant? Covenant was really good, dude. all right. You know, you know who's in that? Jesse Smollett. Really? Yes. Damn, when he pops up and stuff, you're like, oh hey, like Mighty Ducks. I was. It was on like Boy. during Christmas, and it was just on in my hotel, and I was like, hey, Jesse Smollett. That's the kind of mistake that's tough to forget. Well, it's it's getting caught in such a major lie. Such a sociopathic situation. Where but you're also just doing something for attention that's so And you get beyond. turned on by the people that were helping you? <laughs> where they go like, Yeah, fuck that guy. I, I helped him and he's a fucking dick and you're like, Oh my god. That's what's wild is dude, if I got it's also like the way it was structured to come in with the noose still on his neck. Like what? Yeah, dude. It's like oh no, it's like Holding a, a subway sandwich. <laughs> You know, and it's like it's like uh, murder mystery dinners. You know, where they have to oversell it, where they're like, "Oh, the knife ah! is still in me." But isn't that crazy that there's people out there that will do literally anything? Yeah, because they're not in therapy. They don't have. <laughs> they don't understand. They don't understand why they're reaching out for this. But don't you think people that are that broken, like it's not that simple. Mm. That's so. Bro- no, not at all. I think so what it is broken. is it's uh it's like. You know when there's like an infection because something's embedded in you? Yes. But it's not the thing that's embedded in you that's causing the problem as much as it is the part of it that's infected and now it's got a different thing. Right. That's what that is, where it's like something happened to them and instead of them solving it and pulling that out, that splinter that got infected, the infection built on it and now you're dealing with six things on top of the actual problem. Yeah. I, that's my guess, yeah. but that's what it feels like. Because I've seen people go through bad shit and correct it yeah. and be okay. And I've seen people go through kind of bad shit and then it just There's also this snowballs. thing that people do when they do things like that where they recognize that a certain amount of bullshit is tolerable. Yeah. A certain amount of you exaggerating an experience and saying that you were threatened, a certain amount of that seems to be tolerated. Well, where you don't want to question because then it appears that you're insensitive and you go, well, you know, and then there were so many people that stood up for that guy and like made these tweets about well, we're knee jerk reaction. Yeah. But Everything. it's also like we don't have any information. You don't have any information and you're acting on this. But the story seems so implausible, <laughs> but you're nobody right? wanted to say it. Nobody wanted to say, I think he made that up. I immediately thought of when that happened. And like the reaction a couple weeks later, I immediately thought of Ben Stiller in The Cable Guy when they're doing like the Menendez Brothers spoof oh. and they do the phone call and he goes, I don't know who it was, but he was Asian. And they just like, you can, they're clearly lying on the phone call. And you're like, that's kind of how that felt to me where you're like, dude, yeah. you work in the arts. You should know how to tell a better story. <laughs> Your storytelling is dog shit. <laughs> that they, yeah, this yeah. right. <laughs> so that's like they're they're spoofing the yes. Menendez. Like they clearly killed their parents, but that was their excuse. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, when s- someone like him, who's been a child actor, this guy's been a child actor his whole life, right? And they know how the roller coaster goes. They know they're on fire, they're in Mighty Ducks, they're in fucking Alien Covenant, you know what I mean? And then they're on a big show. They're on a big fucking show. And then it starts, the tank starts running out. Where you're like, hey, the the show's running out and we're not paying you as much as you think you need to get paid. You get desperate. And you start being like, well, what can I do to get, to stay up there. Right. What's going to keep me? How do I rocket launch? Right. Am I wearing enough armor to rocket jump and rocket launch myself back up? And he fucked up. Yeah. And he just was like, it was a it was a desperate move. A publicity move. Yeah. We're being like, if this works, I am the victim. Everyone loves a victim. Right. And it'll just keep being that. But then you get fucking caught, dude. Hilarious. It's just funny. It's just the what funniest the... shit in the world is to go like, what's up? Like that call when they, dude, Ran is easy did this awesome show in Edinburgh at Fringe in 2019 when I was there. And he did an hour about what it was like being busted lying about 9 11. Right. <clears throat> dude, the show gave me anxiety because of how he did it beautifully. 
he did it beautifully. He was it was funny. It started funny. He was explaining how he was famous. It was the league. It was the last season. And he goes into the and he he tells you about the call from the New York Times where the guy goes, "I want to talk about 9/11." And Rain Azizi was like, "Dude, the way he even telling you that, oh the way he describes God. it, you're like, oh fuck." But he made it funny. And he made it into a thing of like, I That's fucked amazing. up. It was a great hour. I hope he taped that. I don't know if you ever taped that. But I mean, that feeling of like Smollett getting caught when yeah. that first thing where they go, they're not buying it. And he's like, fuck. fuck. I think he's maintained that he told the truth through the entire time, hasn't what, he? Yeah, I think he, I think he. Did he ever say? He, I don't know. This is where I feel bad for actors because as comedians, we can immediately go like, I'm a fucking idiot. Like you, we can say we're wrong much easier than actors, right? Because actors have that, and you know, you've been around them. They have that, like, it's like being around uh, the queen. There's like little it's rules like, that you can't do, or you're like, I can't bust your balls because you'll take it seriously. Yes, it, it, that's just how the they entertainment business is. Like, musicians act different than actors, and actors act different yeah. than comedians, and there's just all this stuff. But I don't think as an actor, he can go like, ah, fuck, man, I was desperate. You, you don't know. You don't know when you're gonna get on your next show. You don't know when yeah. you're gonna get your next gig. If he would have just done one of those, he but probably would have been. to admit that it was true. That's what I mean. And I don't think he wants to admit that it was true. And now he's stuck in that prison forever. Ooh, and now he's stuck boy. in that thing where you're like, well, so you're saying something that we all that you know the guys involved said that you, you were. You know, it's wild though. I guarantee you that some people believe him still. Like there's people that believe Cosby to the end. That is what a ride or die. When that evidence comes out, it's like women that love serial killers. You're like, you can just get there, huh? It's like thinking that that orc is not going to turn on you after yeah. it did three. Yeah. After it killed three people and you're like, I ah, bet, you know, my pool's a little bit bigger. And then there's like the the female vampire helper. Like Ghislaine Maxwell's like the female Yo, vampire that, helper. There is a level of evil on that whole Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein. That's why it's such a joke right now is because it's so bad that you're like, what is this, fucking Epstein Island? And you're like, oh, it is the worst of the worst. It's like the most disgusting shit. But the, it's what kind of, it comes back to what we're talking about with billionaires. It's like, if you got that evil person in your ear right there, mm -hmm. you're doing some dark shit. Looks great. Ghislaine Maxwell looks great as she runs Florida prison <laughs> half marathon, does yoga and Pilates ahead of March appeal. Uh, who reads that and goes, good, good. Let I'm her glad. out. Yay. Let I'm her out. glad. Her I don't, she's running. There's got to be people. Her life is threatened on a level that we'll never understand. Bro, there is no chance she stays alive if they let her out. No. Because the people that are... She's going to be writing a book, you know? If oh, she writes a book... I, there's there's already a manuscript. There's already, like... Do you think that that's why she's in prison? Yeah, it's... Listen to this. What if she goes to prison to write a book? Because they say the only way that this information is going to get out... Is if we have you locked. We, we have you locked up. Yeah. And we protect you, and you write a book. Dude, she, her information of Rolodex, of the things that have happened, can destroy people that are as powerful as our top businesses. Like, it will topple kings. Like, she she has information on people. Of course they're gonna lock her Isn't up. Isn't that wild? Yeah, let her live in the villages in Florida. Yeah. She's fucking, Too this woman dangerous. has, it's, she has dangerous, she has a dangerous amount of knowledge. And she's probably knowing the clock's ticking. Yeah, release of court documents, expect well over 100 people connected to Epstein, which is just like... What, what, hold up, what's the full... She, she's serving 20 years in prison for luring young women, blah, blah, blah. Uh, shared her thoughts via an attorney ahead of the release of court documents expected to name well over 100 people connected with Epstein. Maxwell's lawyer, Arthur Adala, Adala said that New York Nation's Mario Cuomo... Uh, no, not Cuomo. Mario's, Cuomo. Chris Cuomo, right? Yeah, it's Cuomo. Yeah. Chris yeah. Cuomo, not Mario. I think it's the younger one. I don't know. Yeah, the guy who used to be on CNN. Yes. Uh, News Nation's Cuomo that Maxwell has nothing to say about the impending release of names, but that the former socialite takes issue with the fact that the only person facing consequences over the rampant sex trafficking of young girls is a woman. I don't think she has anything to talk about That's except how smart she is. maybe that if you look at this crime, this overall crime, it's all about men abusing women for a long period of time, and it's only one person in jail, a woman. Absolutely genius. What a genius yeah. defense. Her going like this. 
So I guess it's a boys club when everyone's getting abused, but in court it's only a woman. And you're like, well, the other guy got murdered. Yeah. <laughs> like Epstein got murdered in jail. Maybe you should tell us who else is involved and we'll lock yeah. them up too. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw some boy names out. But how weird is it that no one got named? Well, it's like, that's what I mean with that's she's how you know on a, how much power is involved. In she's this. on a level of danger that they're like. She's like, that's what we need to really get in our heads. There's still an I can kill you in front of everybody and hide it in the news thing going on. What did Putin just do? Yeah. Putin just killed the journalist and was like, what are you guys going to do? And we're like, the, that Naval- those subways are real nice. What was that guy's <laughs> name? Navalny? Uh, yeah, I always fuck it up. I, I've that only read it. That guy seemed to be uh, not like the sweetest of dudes either, right? Everyone's dirty. Everyone's a human being. That's yeah. the whole point is like but there's what, danger on. Was he a, like a, he a spoke nationalist? Out, he, I think he just spoke out against Putin. The crazy one that I'm still obsessed with is the dude that tried to overthrow Putin. Do you remember yeah. that? Oh, when yeah, they were yeah, moving yeah. in with yeah. an army? And then, so let's get to this guy first. Alexei. A Russian, yeah. Alexa Navalny was a Russian opposition leader, lawyer, anti-corruption activist, and political prisoner. He organized anti-government demonstrations and ran for office to advocate reforms against corruption in Russia and against President Vladimir Putin and his government. So what was the controversy about him, though, his views? No, 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 but there were some other ones. There were some other ones like... He's a Cosby believer. Yeah, <laughs> you he had find some, out, you're like, he's like, I think Bill Cosby got a bad rap. He had some questionable things that I was reading. But the other dude like led an army, and they were like, hey, he's marching on Moscow. And then yeah. he went, just kidding, no, I'm not. And then a month later, they're like, his plane crashed. <laughs> and you're like, why were you getting in a plane? You went against Putin, and you're going to fly around in Russia? You- are you out of your fucking mind? What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. How is no one around him going like, you can't John Madden this? You can't take a bus? We, can't, we can protect I'm, the bus. Imagine thinking that Putin wouldn't kill you when you pulled up to Moscow. <laughs> in a tank. tank. He like showed up in a tank. It's before he died. Okay. Um, Just like who he was. Who he was. Or, I mean, I don't know. what. So he's basically an anti-Putin activist. Yeah, he's poisoned uh, by Russian a... opposition figure, anti-corruption activist, was unlawfully detained, has now been in prison for 11 years and six months. He's still in prison and suffers continual ill treatment, including constant surveillance and psychological pressure. He must be freed immediately and unconditionally. So he died in prison. Yeah. And um, what was there? What was the controversy about him? Someone was saying something about his nationalist views. I don't know. It, it could be. See, just see if you can find something. There, some someone was saying terrible things about him. But I mean, that guy dies. But you, you, go, you like, always wonder, like that is something that they would do. Yeah, you know, they'd say, "Oh, do you remember when he got that guy um, Litvinenko with the uh, in England with the sushi? Yeah, where they just reached down and were like, "You're dead." It plutonium. Yeah. They put plutonium in the guy's sushi, and there was like he was like an ex. He was like a rogue KGB agent, and they were like, "We'll see." But dude, you think they're bad? What do you think we do? Yeah, we do that too. What do you think we do? We yeah. do shit that we're like the CIA's been cooking up stuff that like even Russians go like that's pretty fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you ever think they like wink at each other? Like, you're fucking nuts. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, we, we fucking did this whole thing. We flew planes into our towers, and they're like, you guys don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, if there's an open conversation about it, <sighs> or they just fuck around. Um, not, not, not a Western a liberal Democrat. <laughs> yet there's a darker side to him, some say. That's such a fucking, they're pushing that out there to be like, hey. His hey. controversial views on Muslims in the caucus, Georgians, and Central Asian, and Asian migrants in Russia. Immigrants from Central Asia bring in drugs to Russia, Navalny said in an interview with 2012, defending what he described as a realist visa requirement for wonderful people from Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Um, while he was reflected upon some of this pa- these past remarks, they frequently resurface, causing some to question if Navalny is what many in the Western world think he is. Navalny's controversial statements stem from his political origins in the nationalist movement, according to McGinn. Um, there will be a feel-good A24 movie about this guy in two years. He used to attend the Russian March, a very far-right nationalist group generally behind the slogan, Russia for Ethnic Russians. Anybody who expects Navalny to be an ideal Western liberal Democrat has been mistaken. 
she tells Euronews. His ultra-nationalistic sentiment was prominent in a video dating back some 17 years filled with xenophobic <laughs> comments. Do you think this is like his getting like when comics, when they bring up old clips of comics on podcasts, like he was like, oh, that was 12 years ago. I was crazy. So this is what he was saying. He said, uh, everything in our way should be carefully but decisively removed through deportation. Navalny said in a video dressed as a dentist, <laughs> comparing immigrants to dental cavities. When he was dressed up, he was doing costume work. <laughs> He's like, he like has his hands like this. He's like. I know we're having fun here, but really, we've Wait. got to get rid of immigrants. <laughs> Maybe it was a sketch. <laughs> yeah, he's just doing an SNL sketch. <laughs> he's like, live from Moscow, I mean, it's political prison. Maybe he, someone said, you know, Navalny, the best way to get this information <laughs> of this humor. Everyone... I want you to be over the top against the immigrants. <laughs> over the top, like they're Great. fucking cavities. Pull out. And I'm the dentist. Yeah. Navalny, take care of cavities <laughs> for you. They go, we'll call it laughing gas. <laughs> and it's all sketches done like a and they dentist. just tricked this dude into doing this. They really did a movie already? I already made a documentary about him two years ago. Oh, they, oh. they had it ruined. And what ready does the documentary go. say? I have no idea. Does it say, is it all a it was, pro thing? CNN, HBO. Yeah, the HBO Putin and thing? CNN. Yeah, see, any, anybody that's in opposition to Putin has to be good. You know, it's the enemy of our enemy is my friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's a but that's a but the other guy, controversial take. This guy was just gossiping. This guy's like, yeah. did you hear what Putin did? And uh, then the other guy was like, I got tanks, bro. Yeah. We're fucking pulling up to Moscow. Yeah, and he they thought he was going to be okay. Thought he was fine. And by the way, it was in the news a lot, and then it was completely gone, which you're like... Of course he did it. Like, everybody knows he did it. It sucked the air out of the room. But like, he's always... He, Putin's always like, what are you guys doing? He, yeah. That's why, my favorite. Why are you always going after me? What are you Oliver, guys doing? And the Oliver we haven't Stone, invaded anybody. Oliver Stone interview and the... Up until this. The Tucker interview. Yeah. He really loves to be like, well, you guys aren't so great. You know when yeah. you fight with your girl and she like, right. it, like she'll bring up something you did and you yeah. get defensive, so you just go like, yeah, but what's up with you fucking... You do stuff. <laughs> Totally. You're a bitch sometimes. Fucking God bitch. damn it, I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But he's got a point. I like, mean, dude, he is lived. Shit. Do you remember the lady that wrote him the poem when he inv when he uh, in invaded the Ukraine? She wrote him a poem? This, like, Hollywood actress did a thing that was like, <laughs> yeah, dude. No way. <laughs> this shit is no, so funny. No, this is not real. Don't tell dude, me this, this is real. Shit. You never saw this? No. Dude, this shit is so funny. What? Play it from the beginning. This is the most I'm in L.A. Oh bubble. Oh, my God. I have to see this. I have to see this. And I don't President want. Vladimir Putin. I'm so sorry that I was not your mother. If I was your mother, you would have been so loved. Held in the arms of joyous light. Never would the story's plight, the world unfurled before our eyes, a pure demise of nations sitting peaceful <laughs> under a night sky. If I was your mother, the world would have been warm, so much laughter and joy, and nothing would harm. I can't imagine the stain, the soul-stealing pain that the little boy you must have seen and believed, and the formulation of thought quickly taught. This is so self-gratuitous, but He's also- an editor. Yeah, lady. Just get to the punch. It's there's too many superfluous words. <laughs> it's, wor it's a world. It's quite superfluous. It's a word salad, lady. It's get nonsense. It. But by the way, do you know that? I bet she's a wild one, though. Yeah, but you also know that Vladimir Putin was given up. You know, he's given up by his mother for adoption. Like, oh really? He has like a horrible relationship with his mother. He oh. was like, he was given up for adoption, and the people and they like started training him as a like a like young, young. He got into like. As a soldier. Yeah, he's like a super soldier. He was like built for this shit. So this woman in a in a condo in Santa Monica going, I would hug you and I would feel yeah. the plight of the world on my shoulders. And he goes, I was lady, to, I was dead. left for dead. Yeah, and, and you would be dead as well. And you would not be my mother. I yeah. would kill you. <laughs> like, dude, he fucking doesn't give a shit. Putin is so scary <laughs> that when he put on hockey equipment and played against the Russian team, they, get, they let him score yeah. like six goals. It was some Kim Jong-un shit. 100%. They're like, oh, whoa, look at him go. He's, he's like, 
a legit black belt in judo, though. Is he? Mm-hmm. Does he? Yeah. Does, he does sam- He does sambo and judo. Does he? I do? I do not know if he does sambo as well. But that guy but can he definitely fuck does. Shit. He definitely does judo. He's a legit black belt. Really? Like he's an older guy, but he, by the way he moves and the things he does, he does everything absolutely correct. And I'm not. By I should just. I'm not a judo expert. But also, but I know just... these. I know how these throws look when I see judo experts do them. But and this he, isn't. He does this... it. This isn't the Steven Seagal videos no. where he's just doing like the... Well, no, that's not... See, like right there. That's a beautiful hip toss. That is a beautiful hip toss. The way he did that, the way... Look at the smoothness, man. That's legit. That's legit. Do you think he's Wars... A, he's a legit judo black belt. So that guy's definitely not helping at no, all. No, right? no, no. No, no, no. No, Jamie. Fuck. The whole no, time saying, that guy's like... Jamie, fuck, this, fuck, is, fuck, fuck. this is how these things are trained. No, I know. I'm just saying, but But also... guys do resist too, but this is just an execution of technique. Yeah. Just the fact that he can do that. That is very, like, if I showed you how to do that, it would take you a long time before you could do it that smoothly. Now, I'm very dumb when it comes to both judo, but also, more importantly, I'm very stupid when it comes to politics. Here's my question. Jamie, are you questioning this? Is that no, what you... No, I'm not questioning it. I'm just saying, if you're the guy that's going with Putin, you're definitely going to be the best dance partner of all time. Yeah. Yes, but... You're going to lean you're into selling, it. But, you're selling yeah, the yeah, moves. Yeah, you're wrestling. This is... I've literally had this done to kayfabe me. Kayfabe. And it's... A little. I, I, sort of. You, it's, yeah. it's actually just drilling. But I've had this done to me by people who are good at judo, and it's shocking how, how easy they can throw you around. Yeah, because like, when he kicks his feet out... All he's doing is, it seems a lot harder than it is. You're just getting the guy, you're bouncing together, you're timing the bounce, and you're sweeping him and pulling at the same time, and you just go flying. Yeah, it's like when you were little and you'd be walking in front of one of your friends and they'd kick your foot into the other <laughs> one, and you go like, fuck You go fucking fuck, flying. Fuck you. Uh, I think <laughs> wars should just be our leaders versus theirs. Oh, uh, he would win. I, that's what but I mean. Like maybe would that would also all of them. He'd maybe fuck that up would, everyone who's ever been president. That would change the way we elect our president. Where we're like, who we got? Who can we roll well, with? Well, we would change. It would be UFC champions. Yeah, it'd be like John president. Jones. <laughs> be president yeah. John Jones in twenty twenty four. Yeah, and we'd just be dominating the world. Yeah, we'd make Alex Pajeda an official U.S. citizen <laughs> yeah. immediately. Dude, immigration would change so fast. Francis Ngato, yeah, yeah. U.S. citizen. You go, I would yeah. love to have Everybody. you, sir. Yeah, full <laughs> U.S. citizenship. Take Raise a, your right hand. We fucking love you, bro. Brazilian population shot through the roof in the United yeah. States. Once if that it. would be, if there was one guy, it would either be John Jones or Francis Ngato. That would yeah. be the one person. I mean, we don't know until they do it. Until they do the dance. But you know what? Another country would probably be smart and they go like, hey, Francis, how about we give you everything? You're our king. Yeah. You're yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And then you're just, we have yeah. the best, now we have the best military in the world. One guy right. military. But That's we still true. have Bones Jones. Yeah. Oh, man. Can you imagine that? Imagine and then, that. And then that's. We got to get Jones on steroids. Like every, we got to oh. drop the USADA right away. Dude, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you right now, USADA's gone and they put him in like a Weapon X program where right. they're like, how can we. USADA's gone. Brock Lesnar returns. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, my God, Brock dude. Lesner, Brock Lesnar returns. He's 350 pounds at 49 years old. Yeah, 4% just body fat. Jerk. And you just hear the. Just like a juggernaut. And you hear that <laughs> WWE <laughs> music here. It's like, bam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just here uh, that was Romans, oh, but everyone's getting smashed. Yeah, you're, dude. you're trapped in the cage with a superhuman. But that's what it, I mean. That was like you know we do that. How many lives are you saving? How many trillions yeah. of dollars are you saving? We don't need missiles and fucking you know. Yeah, we get away from the American American military industrial complex and just have a badass president. And then no one talks shit about the president. You think CNN or Fox News is going to run their mouth about a guy who's like, by the way, I'm doing a press briefing. He's just doing, he's just doing, he's like, oh yeah, huh? You thought about that? (laughs) They're like, what about taxes? He goes, I think you need to shut the fuck up. That's what I think you need to do. Yeah, dude. Because Putin is like. He's the only badass. You see that guy, you go, he's killed people. Well, I think Netanyahu has as well. Netanyahu is like a serious like operative yeah. in the Israeli army. What was Netanyahu's military background? It's like it's actually very impressive. Well, when like, you hear about the stuff that he's done. I mean, yeah, in Israel, everyone serves, so it's not a question of if he did or not. Yeah, but I think he was like a, a special a, forces guy, the, yeah. their version of the, whatever the Navy SEALs are. Also, the idea is always funny to me of running up on someone that's like trained to be a badass. And you think they're an old man, and they're right. just—it's—it's it's just taken. Up. It's the whole yeah. idea of taken. But I just watched. Uh, Here it is. After graduating from high school in '67, Netanyahu returned to Israel to enlist in the Israeli Defense Forces. He trained as a combat so- soldier and served for five years in a special forces unit of the IDF. Yeah, that guy's—he's yeah. Run up on him. Run up on BB. 
<laughs> he'll kill you with a pencil. Yeah, he'll he'll you won't even yeah. know what happened. Your arm will be broken, and you'll be like, I didn't even reach for him. The crazy thing about this Israeli thing is, before October seventh, there was thousands of people in the streets protesting against him. Thousands for like months. Oh yeah, because he was trying to expand the powers of government. Yeah, well, he's a guy where he's like, you know, you look at people that have been through war and that mm. kind of shit. They're just like. Uh, they're calloused to it. If I was your mother, <laughs> I would Baby, have taken you in I, a joyous bathing light of... I would have had you suckle on my teat until you yeah. were 12 years old. The madre earth and spirits of the sky. <laughs> I would Just have, adding words. I would have bathed you in crystals. I love watching <laughs> videos of guys, of older guys. Like Don Fry was one of my favorite guys when oh, I was yeah. young to watch him like Pride and shit. Yeah. And then he's like just a true Arizona badass. So you see him now as the old man and you're like, you could still fuck shit up. But recently retired, I was watching an interview with Donald Cerrone, who I love. He's one of my favorite fighters. I love of all Donald. Time. I'm from Colorado and he's just like. He's a great dude too. He's just he's a fun guy. He's like. A badass. Yeah. All the story, the story he told on here about uh, cave diving gave me legitimate anxiety. Listening to that, I was too high, <laughs> that and he was talking about being lost, and I was like, oh, "Fuck!" I was Bro, like, that the story fuck? was fucking insane. He was like lost and could only get back through pure darkness underwater. Ugh. He's like a true American badass. Yeah. And he was on this podcast talking about how he got like this this idiot like ran up on him and he just head kicked him and it was yeah. fucking done. And he was explaining like. It was, the on, situation. it was on a dock. Yeah, they were at a lake. Yeah. And I was watching that when I was flying to Austin. And I was like, I found my genre of my favorite thing, which are people fucking around with older badasses and finding but out. But this wasn't even, he was older. He that, was but, a, but I mean, like, active. Cerrone's a, a badass. Like, an yeah. old, now, don't run up on the guy. Like don't old, run up on him any time in his life. Ever. <laughs> but this was, like, years ago. Oh, this was when he was active in the yeah. UFC? Yeah, he was yeah. active. That's yeah. what a dumb thing. These guys that think that they can, you can beat a trained fighter. They didn't know he's a trained fighter. They're oh. just douchebags. Well, guess what? And they got head kicked. Back to the wrong guy. I mean, imagine that's your opening move too. It's so how cool. much disdain do you have in this guy's ability that but you're just gonna head kick him? How much athleticism? Yeah, I can barely clip my toenails now. This guy's <laughs> starting with a head kick. He's like, bah! and he's like, bah! that's literally what he does for a living. Yeah, dude, he was a guy, man, like. You grow up in Colorado and you go to like the Western Stock Show or whatever. And I was just like, I'm just like a pussy suburban kid. But you see these like Eastern Colorado kids or these kids that are from like the, the real front range. And you're like, oh, you're a badass. This yeah. is how the land got settled. He, <laughs> ha he has this one KO in the UFC, this one combination where he lands on this dude where it's like the Matrix. He like, and he's just touched him. He punches yeah. him up, punches him down, face kicks him, follows up. And the way he did it was, uh, Rick, I forget the fighter's name that he did it to. We went to a- uh, Rick Story? We went to a UFC. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. So right. watch this, Boom. hold on, let me do it from the beginning. Look at this so combination, one. jab to the body, oh. left hand, ducks down, Head kick. That's a full meal. Are you out of your fucking mind? That's a full meal. Are you out of your fucking fuck mind? It. It's so cool. It's so cool you could do that Are in real life. I went to a UFC event uh, at Barclays because Stipe Miotic was on Billions. And so, oh, nice. And Stipe's the man. He's yeah. like the coolest fucking guy. I've He's ever awesome. Known. And his manager was like, oh, I can get you tickets to the fight that's at Barclays. Stipe wasn't on it, but Cerrone was. And I'm a huge Cerrone guy. And I went with Luis J. Gomez. And we sat there, and I got so excited when Donald Cerrone knocked the dude out that Luis was like, as a friend, it bothers me how much you like this guy. <laughs> He's like, stop it. It's like a friend calling it out. He's like, it's like you want him to be your dad. And I'm like, no, fuck that. He's just like the coolest when you're like, that guy's so fucking cool. But Lewis can't help himself. I love it, dude. Lewis, yeah. the first event we ever went to, the first live UFC event I ever went to was uh, Jones Sonnen uh, in Jersey. Charles, it was like, I, I don't think Jones had the title yet, or maybe he did, the light heavyweight, but it was... John Jones, Chael Sonnen, and we're in the crowd. And I've been to boxing matches, and you feel that. John had the light heavyweight title back then. Yeah. Yeah. And he was just shooting on, I mean. He beat the fuck out He broke out his toe. Yeah, he beat him up so bad he broke his own toe. Yeah, shooting he on He pushed him. off so That's hard crazy. off the ground while yeah. he was smashing him. that You could see it in the video where it turns over. Yeah. There's like an overhead yeah. shot where they see where it turns over. Yeah. 
I mean, so, he just beat the fuck out of him. And here's the thing. He didn't even know it was broken until he was talking to me. Yeah, in the ring. Yeah. You looked down. I remember that because I was in the yeah. arena. You looked down and you're like, I think your toe's broken. And he was like, he hopped over to you. Bro, that's how much he wanted to fuck Chael Sonnen up. That's crazy. He just wanted to fuck him up and teach him that you do not belong in here with me. I mean, dude, Bones Jones is just He's unbelievable. He's a monster. He's a monster. He, and uh, the thing is, greatest light heavyweight of all time without question. Yeah. There's no second, there's no second place. Dude, those old John Nike, Jones is number one for sure. Those old Nike like uh, with the open slit on the side so mm -hmm. he, can, uh, he can knee you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, that was wild. So we were there. And here's the thing, man. If he didn't get busted all those times and all of the things that he did, yeah. and he would have had Nike sponsorships. I mean, he, dude, would, he, he already had one. He had he one would, lined up. He would be the Jordan of fighting. Yeah. He would just be like. That's how talented that guy is. Yeah, you're just like, you know, it's the greatest thing. You can't yeah. even argue it. You can argue who comes close to him. Yeah. But we were at that fight. And, and, Lewis, and we're watching these guys get chippy. These like Jersey Italian guys are just fucking yelling at this guy. Yeah. And it's like a dude, you know, eight mile style, like a white guy being like, yo, what, what's up with the disrespect? And Lewis just so casually goes, there's going to be a fight. You should pull your phone out. Those guys are going to fight. And I was like, no, they're not. They're just John or whatever. And then it just, they just start fighting in the crowd. And I was like, damn, Lewis, you really felt that. <laughs> he like yeah. felt it in the senses. He's like, yeah. it's about to go down. <laughs> Lewis has had some fights. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I love it. He's got some crazy stories. He's told on when, when I've done podcasts with him about like growing up, he had a fucking tough life. That's why I always say people with Lewis, I go, if you had that tough of a life, there's no way you'd end up how good he's done. Mm. All of us would have failed right. with all the hard shit. Because sometimes you talk to people and you're impressed by what they've responded to in life. Right. Or you're like, there's no way I could have responded to that. Like right. Vladimir Putin, he's an evil guy. He's done evil shit. But you read about his childhood. But that's why that lady's poem's so funny. And you're like, this guy was <laughs> literally thrown in a ditch, basically, and then came up and is now the most powerful man Oof. outside of the United States. Oof. That's a fucking drive. That's a drive. That's a son. response that yeah. I do not have. You don't get that drive if you're the son of the king. That's exactly yeah. If you're a mo you know, yeah. if you're if you're like given everything, you don't have that in you. No, we are like everyone left me. He was like, I changed rules. Yeah. I run it again. That was my favorite thing. Is he goes, I am uh, no longer president, prime minister. Guess what? Prime minister has more power than president. And yeah. then after a while, he goes, I'm just president again. <laughs> and you're like, dude, <laughs> the guy is just changing shit in a way that everyone around him is going like. Badasses, Russian yeah. badasses around him are going like, hey, it's a good one. I like that one. They just have to be agreeable. His yes, man. Yeah. It's got to be a terrifying thing. Well, he's got it locked in. As yeah. long as you play by the rules, seems like he lets you live. Who do you think <laughs> kissed? That's exactly it. There he goes. That's how it goes. I might live. Who do you think has the more ass kissers around them? Putin or Kim Jong un? Kim Jong un. Yeah, that's like crazy. I bet Putin. Putin's intelligent. I bet Putin requires people to have different p perspectives, challenge, so that he can take into consideration. And I bet he's very strategic about what they do and why they do it. I think Kim Jong Un, like the, that's. Well, he's a rich. You want to talk about a prince's yeah. a king's son? Exactly. Exactly. And, like, there's the comparison. But the difference is, like, the people of Russia are doing way better than the people of North Korea. Well, people from North Korea, they get they like find out about stuff on the outside like yeah. when they get out and they're like, "What the fuck, dude?" Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I'd be so mad dude. if you're North Korean and you get out and you go like, "The fuck?" That's you... a whole country like an orca tank. Yeah. 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 They're just like, "No, nah, you don't even get info from the outside. You get nothing." And when dear leader dies, you have to cry for like months. Can you imagine? They're putting people in jail that didn't cry hard enough. If I got arrested, my grandmother passed and I loved her. If they were doing that and I didn't get arrested, I'd be like, dude, I was dealing with shit. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, I explain. deal with it my own way. Yeah, I, go I, like go that. I think about it. I cry when I'm alone. Yeah. I need to fuck alone. I had to watch Iron Claw, that wrestling movie last night in my hotel room to jar something loose. So look, this is people <laughs> that have to publicly cry. All right, listen. Can we also admit, though, when Kim Jong-il died, right? Look at them. And they did this. It is hilarious 
that you're that powerful that you're like cry harder motherfucker that everybody has to cry yeah this is where communism leads kids yeah. all you fucking idiots out there that think they just no one's ever done it right there's <laughs> only one way to do it you and have to have this. someone has to enforce the rules and yeah. that person is always the military and they have power over everything <laughs> jamie's pointing this guy out you think he's gone this guy in the middle goes like oh yeah, fuck i didn't know a fucked. camera was there i didn't know a fucking camera was there I, I just, uh... <laughs> yeah, that guy's probably tortured right now. Yeah. He's probably that guy's just... still being whipped. Yeah. And Kim Jong un's. I mean, he didn't he have his uncle killed? Yeah. Did, Kim Jong un was just like yeah. when Ill died? Yeah. Some people are trying to move in on the territory. It's like, uh uh-uh. uh. I'm but, the prince, bitch. But also, so the difference between a self made man and a prince is that prince has that, like, let them die. Yeah. Like they have that energy yeah, where they go, my yes. uncle has ran upon me. Like Vladimir Putin would be like, yeah. I am very disappointed that you would not think that I would take care of you. He'd be yeah. like, right. right. We're in, you know, he's like, you are dead. <laughs> you are dead to me. <laughs> like that prince energy. <laughs> and now the sun and the stars have spoken and you have died. Dennis Goodbye. Rodman wants you to die. Dennis Rodman, would you like to kill my uncle? Thumbs up or down. <laughs> he's like, oh, Imagine you let Dennis Rodman. Hey, hey, what's up, man? When he's over there and he's hammered in that documentary, <laughs> he's like, oh, man, you rule. When he sings him Happy Birthday. Wild. Big J showed me that documentary, it, like rubbing his hands together. Imagine being friends with a dictator of a country where the people are starving and you're getting drunk with that guy and playing basketball and just hanging out. And then you, and then like, yeah. And then you walk outside. Oh, there it is. What is he saying? They're, they're clapping off. Dude, the NBA players that are there for the fat check. Wow. You know what though? How many times have we? How many times have we done gigs that have killed our soul? But that one's got to feel weird. Like, <laughs> now, do you have to lose? Going like this? Do you have to Joe, lose to the North Koreans? It's just going like this, Joe. Just standing there after you were a four-time All Star in the NBA, and you're like, I don't know how they could lose. Here's the question: Do they have to lose? Not possible. I mean, are they allowed to really play? N- probably not. Probably. I mean, it probably seems a- like there's no competition here. This is. This is insane to I would, watch. I would say they give them as much pushback as that guy in the judo class did against Putin. <laughs> that guy was good. Def- no, they're not playing defense. That guy yeah. was good. Look, not- shut up, Jamie. That guy was good. <laughs> hold on, no, hold, hold, on. hold on. Go back. 100%. That is a bunch of giant dudes letting a really short guy shoot a ball from very far away. It, you know what it is? There's no yeah, one within yeah. 15 feet of him. It's like, it's like air bug <laughs> Jamie, defense. Jamie, you're a hater. No. That I'm guy's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's like, no, I would key up on that guy and make uh, his life a living up. I'd look like an all-star in this game. <laughs> yeah, so but, they let guy, oh, they let the Koreans get close? Is that what happened? I would guess they would want this to be like a Harlem Globetrotters game where they want mm-hmm. these players that they know to just beat the shit out of their... Yo, they let Robin vocals. play with lip ring. Yeah, this can't dude. be real, dude. That story when he left in the last dance when That's they're talking about that Bulls team That's and a he movie just... they're making, I think. Are they? I don't know who's in charge of it, but yeah, I think they're making a movie about this whole day or two. Oh, in in Poin Yang, right. or... no, no, Rodman going to Vegas. Oh, it's oh, dude. Like Billy, I think Billy Corgan talked about on this podcast. Oh, that's nuts. Mm. Yeah, it's. Yeah, uh, I think he did too. Now that you brought that up, he uh, he just asked Phil Jackson. He's like, I'm going to go to Vegas. And Phil Jackson's like, please let it be two days. And it was like four. <laughs> they're, just on a, they're just on a run in the season. He's like, I'm going to go to Vegas and get fucked up. I, I'm hanging out with Carmen Electra. And Phil Jackson's like, God damn it, you're so good. Being that good at something where they bend the rules for you. Yeah. And they go like, ah, fuck, dude. All right, just go ahead. Just come back, please. <laughs> and he's like, I might not. <laughs> did he miss any games? I think he did, right? Did he miss games, Jamie? I don't remember the the movie right now is in production. It's called Forty Eight Hours in Vegas, but it's been in so that's sort of what he asked for three years. But that's not what I think he took. I think he took like four days. It was during the finals. <laughs> the finals the oh, during the finals. My God, was they usually maybe have three days person. off. But I think he took for two days. Oh, what? They, they had to go get him, as I remember. They like Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson, Sky Pippen all got on a plane. And we're like, you got to come back. We have a game tomorrow. You're our leading rebounder. Oh, oh my God. And he's like, that is so insane. And he's just been partying for days. Dude, it's like the hangover meets a space jam. <laughs> we're like showing up and you're like, hey, we got a, the biggest game of our life and you're here in Vegas. 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 Did you ever see where, God, what was it? Mm. What? Production's off a little bit, I guess. The Jonathan Majors, who's had some problems this year. He was. Oh, he was playing he was Rodman? He Rodman, yeah. Uh, oh. Um, did you ever see when he was on Celebrity Rehab? 
Yeah, it was horrible. It was hilarious. Celebrity he rehab was, was like he got in shape. All he did is like run on the treadmill, <laughs> like drinking oh, really? water. Was like, I was thinking he of, just partied a little too much. I think celebrity rehab, the one I'm thinking of, is the first season where you saw people melting down in ways that you're oh, like, yeah. what the fuck? Oh, well, first of all, it's the worst thing you could ever do to someone who's in the middle of recovery yeah. is to broadcast them and all their insecurities to the world yeah. and have people shit on each other and insult each other. <laughs> Doctor, like, what? Doctor Drew hosted that show. And it led to one of my favorite Stanhope bits where he said, uh, <laughs> Dr. Drew is to science. I forget what it was, but he was like talking about, he's like, that would be like being an OBGYN that only specializes in hairless, stinkless Norwegian pussy. <laughs> like the way that Stanhope <laughs> described it, I was like, it's so funny. I fucking love that. Dude. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, but Celebrity Rehab, you just saw people be like, oh, here's your favorite guy and he's super broken. Yeah. He's fucking crazy, And it bro. gives you a window into, like, the dark side of Hollywood. Well, you see them be like, yeah. it, I don't keep that money. That money right. doesn't keep coming in. That's like the Jesse Smollett thing mm -hmm. where you're like, you wonder how many of those people that are on drugs hit that moment where they're like, I have to do something crazy right. to get back up there. I'll do celebrity rehab. Like, right. I'll be the victim. Like, you, what do you do if you're that guy? Like, if you, that guy can't work. He's got to save three babies. <laughs> He's got a music career, apparently. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Uh, I mean, Does he, though? That's... What if it fucking rules? What if it's like, good? Wow, that'd be a problem. What if we heard music and it was like, oh, damn. Shit. All he's releasing last year is a single, but. Let's, let's hear, it. hear it. I mean, before he got in trouble, he had a bunch, he had a record career. But can we, did can he, we though? Yeah, you know can we hear it and nah. edit this out of the show? We can, I can just play for you guys. <laughs> can we just play it for, just play it for yeah, us? Just play in-house. Okay. And who? what will the audience hear? Nothing? Uh, I'll cut it out. Can you I'll give cut it out. Or you can overlap elevator music. We'll be right back with our commentary, ladies and gentlemen. I let he, he produced this um, movie about uh, something. B-Boy Blues. It was a gay novel, 1994. Oh, it's going for that gay market. Yeah, but he's got it. also a year ago, now. So like, this is that's the best I could find. I would describe he had a bunch of charting songs in 2014, and then oh really? After that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he actually is a legitimate. He had songs on the Empire that were making it big, and then that's where I, I was looking to around 2018. Mm. They started not charting anymore, and then 2019 is when is when the thing happened. The hoax, the hoax Isn't that crazy? You can follow it like that. You can go like, oh, here he is, and then yeah. now you're like, it's dipping. Are we about to see something? Are we about to see a little fucking? Yeah. <clears throat> I will. I will say my review of the song is it sounds like. AI R and B. Mm. It sounds like yeah. Th there's not one specific thing that I was like, oh, that was really. He could sing, for sure. Right. He could sing, but it just feels like AI. AI like right, you a lot know, of shit feels like you know, AI. You know what flavor my coffee is? Thanks. What? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> huh? What? Okay, cool. I know what yeah. you want to drink in the morning. Thanks. I don't know what's worse, that or the open letter to Vladimir Putin. That's the worst thing I've ever. <laughs> that's one of the worst things. You're dealing with a man that's a murderer, and you're writing him a poem about. about if I was your mom, I'd fix it. Like, that's also first of all, how outrageous. Great shit. And talking. Is she even a mom? No. We looked it up. I think we looked it up on the bonfire. Even funnier. <laughs> I don't think she's a mom. Makes it funnier. Uh, <laughs> it is probably the best piece of shit talking we have against Vladimir Putin. Because Biden or Trump, either one of them talking they shit to Putin. Nothing. They won't say But this woman being like, just a self-important actress being like, yeah. I'm going to tell you what I would have done. Nothing can stop hot actress energy. <laughs> it's just like... An oh. Yeah, it's an immovable object versus the Some same. mentally ill people are also hot. This was the Harvard Crimson. They, they were just a satire. But. Oh, okay. Oh, if I was your no, that's white funny. woman single-handedly stops war in Ukraine, yeah. if I was your mother? <laughs> <laughs> imagine, yeah. imagine, I give me like best case scenario when you put that on TikTok <laughs> is this really does go viral. It gets to Vladimir. It gets someone, to Vladimir the, and you see him crying in the Kremlin. Someone slides it across his oversized desk. And then she gets a phone call. From Russia? What's going on? What is this? I wish you were my mother. Could you still be my mommy? Yeah. She goes, who is this? And that's that's how he tricks her into moving to Russia. And then he's got a new bride. Yeah. And now we have She's a, married to me now. And that's their meet cute. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like a rom-com from the 90s where it's like, she's an actress. He's a bloodthirsty dictator. <laughs> what happens when a poem goes viral? It's their sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch the, I watched l small clips of the Tucker interview with Putin. Oh, it what just did, looked, What did you think? It looked, uh, I mean, did you see what Putin said about it? 
did what did he say? He was like made fun of how softball of an interview it was. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he like made fun of Tucker to the Russian press. He went, uh, I prepared, I think the quote was something like, I prepared to be challenged. Oh, interesting. I was prepared for them to come at me. Yeah. Because I guess, some, you're right, someone in his inner circle is smart. Because he was clearly got his balls busted for all the ranting he did. Putin says he prefers Biden to Trump and mocks Tucker Carlson questions. Wow. Which, again, this could all be a psyop because he's, a, he, you know, how he moves and shit. He said Biden is more predictable. The lack of sharp questions. Yeah, it interview. said it threw him off because you could tell someone busted his balls for how long he ranted on shit when they were like, what are you talking about? Interesting. Uh, and it said, yeah, he was he was expecting them to. Um, but here's the other p part of the quote that people aren't using. Scroll back up again. He said. Um, he goes, I think that, uh, he said, b between Biden and Putin, uh, Putin said without hesitation, the current U.S. president was more experienced, predictable, an old school politician, but added, we will work with any U.S. president who the American people have confidence in. Mm -hmm. Like, why isn't, why did he, besides preferring Trump, he says he'll work with anybody. Yeah, but that's what I mean. He says this guy. He doesn't say unreasonable things when it he, comes to that. Well, he just says stuff that you go like, he says stuff that's smart enough that you go like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a real, like Kim Jong-un is like, the stars have told me that I'm the leader. And you're like, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> and Putin says stuff and you go, Fuck. I mean, it's not <clears throat> completely incorrect. Well, he's very intelligent. Yeah, the guy worked for yeah. the KGB. Yeah. The guy, it's like a CIA operative being our leader. And they're like, hey, I know how these fucking things go. Have you ever seen when he talks about how many U.S. presidents he's been through? No. And about how they all have these promises. Oh, yeah. And then once they get into office, he goes, men with coats like mine, sit down with them, not with this color tie, you know? Yeah. And they tell them. Exactly what you're going to do. Like it's cool to to see because he's telling the truth. Yeah. He, he knows what he says. Well, he's on the other side of it. He's on the other side of it, but it's not a lie. No. Like it's, and we all know that. <laughs> yeah, they all. No one like Obama. One of his things was to to help whistleblowers. It was like a part of the the website to get him elected. Yeah. It's like protection for whistleblowers. They were like the worst for whistleblowers. But dude, I'm telling you, they all. He knows that all presidents, left or right, are just yeah. the, sa are it's the same arms. They have the arms of the same monster. Yeah. He knows how they work. That's what he means by Biden's a predictable one. He goes, yeah. I, I can fucking, it's like knowing how to drive an old car. You're like, exactly. I fucking had one of these. You're fucking throwing in reverse. They were saying that those Chinese weather balloons, those flying over things, those big balloons, yeah. that they were doing that when Trump was around, but they didn't tell Trump. That's hilarious. Because Trump would like shoot him down. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> He's but just like, fuck Biden that, shot that, him down. Yeah. Which Biden... is even crazier. There was like, good. Yeah. It's fine. But if Trump shot him down, like, he's fucking launching missiles into the sky. Well, they threatened uh, World War. That's always the threat either side pushes on the other, where do they go, like, World War Three is coming. Do you, you ever see the dude who tells the story to the news about the missile that, uh, or the, the, the jet that crash landed? Have you seen this? No. There was a jet where a pilot ejected from the jet, it, like some fucking super expensive fighter jet, and it flew into the ground. And this one dude was there when it happened. And this dude's like super country. It's, I love it. It's damn, dude. That yeah. is po possibly. I love the beginning of the interview. Where he goes, "I've been on this earth about seventy-two years." Yeah. <laughs> I just love a guy that states how old he is at the beginning with a straw hat on. Yeah, he goes, "Nah, I, I ain't seen that shit in the country." But I'm having a shave, which is yeah. definitely code for a shit. He was yeah. taking a dump in that plane oh, crash. I'm taking a shave. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that fucking rules. What if it was a cover story for a crashed UFO? That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah I mean that's. I want his explanation yeah. on UFO. He goes, tiny little gray men. They seem mean. <laughs> He's like, oh. I think they lost the jet though. They knew the guy ejected from the jet, and they lost the jet. It was reported that the jet was lost before this guy reported, and they found out where it where it slammed. It lost, like two or three days though. Yeah, because I remember reading that was news it? story yeah. about a lost jet, and you're like, how the fuck do you He's, lose a jet? Also wearing a weighted vest. Yeah, that guy's <laughs> probably got low body fat under there. Is that what that is? Yeah, guy's well, probably shredded. SPRI. He's working out. Yeah. Maybe I he's like it. a dude who's just out there works out all the time. Yeah. 
You just take it off. He's just shredded. Yeah, he's like, just Fuck. old man ripped. He's like an old Rambo. Have just you go- ever seen those old dudes that work out in the park on uh, those uh, monkey bars and um, yeah, dude, up in Harlem. Hand, yeah, and the um, the gymnast bars, the various different height parallel bars. I did this. But these, these guys, guys are insanely fit, dude. So and there's this one old dude that does it on Instagram that I follow. Well, I've met back when I was getting out of the waiting tables days. It was about twelve. 13 years ago, I did a series for Yahoo called Mansom, which sounds so <laughs> gay. But it was, uh, they would have me do different weird shit or whatever. And they, I went up to Harlem and did an episode with these guys. And they were like showing me the shit they could do. And it was unbelievable. Like, oh, there it is. Yeah, the bartenders. <laughs> yeah, Look see? at you, bro. Uh, dude, I am fresh face, full alcoholic at this point. <laughs> Very hungover. Dude, this guy would do stuff. He would do, and then I would try to do stuff, and I'm out of shape, so my arms are doing like the stabilizing. Well, they can do insane shit. Dude, they he do flag would, poles. Yeah, he would like lift himself all the mm-hmm. way up, and then all the way back down with like yeah. not even breathing him. Just, like, Just try doing the monkey bars back and forth a couple of times, and see how hard your it is on your forearms and your yeah. your your grip strength, especially at forty. Yeah, like look at this. They can just do stuff. But that is, it just shows you also, like, their physiques come from entirely from body weight. Yeah. And you, like, look at gymnasts. They're some of the most fucking ripped people alive, and it's just all body weight. Yeah, it's no weight yeah. lifting. It's just that. Pull-ups. How hard up? Look at that. Yeah. Like, these I, guys that's crazy. Crazy muscles. That's why and flips up parkour guys are crazy strong Yeah, to have that kind of control. Oh, for sure. For sure. Now, like I could do guys, that if I got up there. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I could flip around. If you fall, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, especially at 40. <laughs> yeah. I'd fucking take a fall and be like, oh. I think they have a rubber floor there, it looks like, which is nice. It'll help you a little bit, but yeah. still not good. Being out of shape and trying to do that in front of them. <sighs> Those are just like little liability places. <laughs> like, there's so much liability in there. I would there. like to know the insurance on play, like city playgrounds, like the legalities of what they have to be like, you're not suing us. And is there some stuff that's grandfathered in, like those domes, those oh, iron those domes? thunder of, domes? They're like monkey bar domes. Like those are the grips shit. Grips all around, you'd be inside of them and, and shit. Fall. Yeah. Dude, I used to go to this place in Denver when I was a kid called Big Fun, and it was like a Discovery Zone kind of thing, mm. but they had these rubber straps. It was called the spider web, and it was these tight, thick, like that wide, that thick, across, but like dozens of them all the way up, and you would climb through, disaster. When you fall, you back, and you like go through these like straps slapping you in the back and the neck. You would come back with like lacerations on your arms and shit. It's mm. the most fun I've ever had. And there's zero chance they would do that now. Just rubber straps and be like, climb to the top. Yeah. And it was like a good 20 feet tall. You know what they do have still, too, that I'm kind of shocked they still have? Is those trampoline buildings. Those are awesome. you go in them and it's just trampolines everywhere and everyone's just bouncing from one trampoline to the next one. Yeah. Fuck. Dude, this guy, uh, very funny comic, Damien, that opens, he's open for me. He used to do slam ball. Back oh in the God. day. And he showed me. I remember me, slam they ball. They brought it back this summer. Yeah, they brought it back, but now they do it with contact. Or I think you used to be able to do it with what contact. A, what a wild idea to have basketball with trampolines. It sounds good on paper, but your mm. knees are like, dude, I can't do this. Oh, yeah, it's got to be terrible for Like you, you knees, land right? wrong? Oh, yeah. Like it almost, I wonder <laughs> if it's almost easier to land on a hard floor. I bet you have to do everything totally different because you have two different things going on. You got trampoline jumping and then you have running on a court. Yeah. You're going back and forth to both of these things. Dude. That's probably really hard to do. Yeah. Go from... But is it actually better to see people fly through the air like that? They can and do crazy. Dunk? Yes. I mean, <laughs> is it better? What do you mean? You watch baseball for home runs. Of course, this is yeah. what everybody wants to see. They get to do crazy, crazy dunks. Yeah, but you can't even dribble in the center. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, you, you, yeah, you know you what? You kind of have to, though, right? Like, how much traveling happens? Well, they take as many steps as NBA players do now, that Euro three step. Sure. What are you allowed? It's There's like, a lot of they call it a Euro step. Where you're basically allowed what three steps? I think it's it, the NBA. Apparently, there's like a, a two and a half step rule. There's a gather step dribble that people can like take you can and, pick and up and go and, like one two and then run. There's a few try. guys oh. on Instagram that break down these crazy plays and be like, well, "This is not a travel, and here's why." And they take five minutes in slow motion to show you why it wasn't a travel. <sighs> I got here crazy early, and I was on my phone in my car watching highlights of this dude on Twitter that they're they're starting to call him Cream Cream Abdul Jabbar. 
he's a white guy from uh, Indiana State. This this reporter, Matt Ross, called him Cream, Ab- Cream Abdul Jabbar, and he's a white guy from Indiana State. Let me see what his name is. I think I have it still up on my phone. I just saw it on Twitter. Oh, yeah, dude, he rules. His name's Robbie Avila, and he's like, when you see this guy, you're like, oh, he's just a big, fat, white guy with glasses, and then he just balls really he just balls out and he's at indiana state yeah i love it i love a goofy white guy there he is that's him yeah this guy had 35 points last night what? he's just putting it up yeah really let me see some highlight this guy could fucking go he plays like he's playing with kids like that's how he kind of looks sometimes he's right there down in the key right there yeah up and in and he just looks like if he showed up at the playground you'd Whoa. be like you'd be like ah he's probably not that good and then he just fucks shit up those goggles are fresh too yeah dude i love it he's got those old school kurt rambis glasses on yeah i love a guy that has horace grant up top those glasses probably help oh yeah it's like ricky vaughn in major league you can finally <laughs> see the strike zone i wonder if you he was can uh, really <laughs> see everything yeah but look he can dish wow i love a goofy big white guy that's great at basketball that's why i love Jokic on the nuggets so much he just looks like he should not be good, and he's awesome. Wow. He looks like he's not trying. Really. Yeah, he moves slow in that way where you're like, Are but he's you? precise. But he's just like, fuck, 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 I just fucking Larry Bird. Shot. Yeah, Larry Bird, you're yeah. like. And also, the Larry Bird is, they say, arguably the greatest shit talker of all time. <laughs> that he was like yeah. other tier level of shit talking. He would apparently show up. To like, remember when they had those uh, free throw competitions? And he said, "Who's coming in second? Oh yeah, he said that at the All Star <laughs> game for the three point competition. He goes, "Who's uh, who's going to be in second place?" There was one, I, and I don't really know how true this story is, but List, you know, Joe List is a huge Celtics fan, huge Boston sports guy. He told me a story that Larry Bird, it was like the '86 season, and they were he was lined up on a guy, and Larry Bird hit three shots in a row. They call a timeout, and he comes back on the court and he tells the guy, he goes. Can you believe they're going to give the ball to McHale? I just scored six straight points on you, and they're giving the ball to McHale. And the guy went, what? And then the play happens, and McHale scored, and Bird looked at him and was like, I told you. <laughs> like He's just so good. He's like, yeah, I'm not getting the ball, and I'm mad about it. But this guy is. That's he's like, hilarious. you got to be so good to be able to LeBron, talk that. LeBron tells the players on the other team what they're doing wrong sometimes. Really? He's like, you're supposed to be over here. That's wild. You're fuck. Like, hey, move. Like, yeah, he he knows what everybody's doing. His yeah, basketball knowledge is at the level so far above everybody else on the floor. He's he, most coaches also. Dude, wow. this what's cra- what I love is in sports where someone calls something out in the middle of a play. There's two examples in the NFL that I know where Peyton Manning gets mad at his tackle for missing a block, and he's running. He's when he's on the Colts, and you can hear him go, "God damn it!" <laughs> like he like yells the guy's name in the middle of the play and still has the play done, but he like in the middle of the play goes like you fucked up and like screams it out. It's fucking hilarious. One of the best versions of that. Yeah. Max Holloway was fighting Brian Ortega. Yeah. And he told Brian Ortega, "You got to block like this." And he puts his hand up to help him block. In the middle of beating his ass, oh, he takes his hand. He goes, "Put your hand right here." I mean, dude, that that watch, that moment. You need to see this. Watch. Look. Watch this. Look, he puts his hand. See, he's teaching him how That's to do it. so he funny. He look, look, look. Protect me. Look, see? Watch this. Look at this, man. Bro, put your hand there. <laughs> and he did, like, the demonstration. Yeah. Like, I won't even do it to you. And then he beats his ass more. He's That's just such a nice guy. Wild. That was, <laughs> that was like when Khabib got Connor in the corner and was talking to him. Yeah. That let's was, talk now. Let's talk now. Let's, yeah, talk, let's now. talk now. You're, like, just getting elbows hammered yeah. on you, and you're like, ah, 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 ah. fucking wild. Wild. It's a wild sport, man. Yeah, those guys are badasses. That's why. Real. It's... Yeah, that's a that's a different kind of human being. Yeah, kind of human being that can do that successfully for a living. Yeah, yeah, and, and just it's a big one coming make up a... soon in uh, in Miami. Big, yeah, big fucking card. Man. You excited? Oh yeah, it's a big one. There's one fight I'm really excited about: Dustin Poirier versus Benoit Saint Denis. Okay. Benoit Saint Denis was a, a French special forces guy who uh, now fights in uh, MMA and it yeah. is murking people like he's and, str- a straight up killer I mean he looked that that chest tattoo is yeah. fucking Bro, tough he there was one of the fights that I uh, uh, called and I'm interviewing him afterwards 
And he starts talking about, I like America. You helped us out during World War II. Yeah. Thank like, you very much for like bringing us back. He's talking about America in terms of like military, like that we've always been kind of aligned. Yeah. And I'm like, that's how he's thinking. Yeah. He's, he's That's a problem. A, he's a killer. He got into MMA to be better as a soldier. I think he already had a judo background. But uh, the MMA thing is fairly recent. It's only been like six years, I believe, or so. He's 13. I saw his record. He's 13 yeah. and 1. He's called he, the he God lost, of War. Yeah. That's badass. Lost, As a fan of God of War, that's badass. I think he, the fight he lost was at a different weight class, too. I think he fights at 155, and I'm pretty sure, you should check on that. I'm pretty sure his fight that he lost was at 170. But he's very good, man. He's very good. And he's calculated, and he doesn't have any weaknesses. He's very good on the ground. He's very good standing up. Um, he's just good. Is, if he wins that fight, does that elevate him to a shot at the title? Well, it's a big jump. He's yeah. a big jump in competition. And this guy goes from beating guys who are pretty good, good fighters, yeah, solid fighters, to to the top of the heap. Dustin Poirier, yeah, a guy who's been uh, interim champion. It's a, it's a different level, and for Dustin to accept that fight, it's a big risk. And Dustin must have got paid a lot of money to, yeah. to do that because that's a favored, uh, favored. that's crazy. Saint Denis favored over Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier, who has fought fucking everybody, yeah, everybody. The guy beats Connor twice, and he's still the underdog against Saint Denis. That's, that's insane. That's how scary that dude is. I like that Michael Page is fighting in yes. the UFC. Kevin and Hall and Michael Page is fun. I know Michael Page from the, the vent like. He was fun, dude. That's a real fight. Yeah. That's a real fight because Kevin Holland is fucking dangerous. Yeah. He's fucking dangerous, and he's got a lot of MMA experience, a lot. And he's very good on the ground, and he's got ridiculous one-punch power. Yeah. And it, that's also a welterweight fight where Kevin, I think, is at his most dangerous. At 170, Kevin is so fucking dangerous. He would do, like, spinning back elbows and yeah. shit. Like, I know Michael Page from watching, like, his highlights. If you go to Michael Page, Michael Venom Page, before he was ever an MMA fighter, was a high-level karate point fighter. Oh. And I was always wondering... Like, when are those guys going to make their way into MMA? Because we had this one guy, Raymond Daniels, who was uh, also an op opponent of Michael Venom Page in a karate thing. Um, but uh, there's a video you can watch of that, of them competing in a karate tournament. What's but the, those uh, guys at that, that those high-level karate guys can move in and out very fast. Is that what their, is that what their like, superpower, you would say, is? Is they're just, like, the they're blitz. just crazy in and out and can nail you with yeah. shit? They can cover distance much faster than everybody else because their game is all about touching you once. Yeah. So it's just it's it's like you're you're playing a game of karate tag. Yeah. It's probably karate the safest. tag is the no, funniest name to call it though. It kind of is like that. Like to to make it sound safer, yeah. you go. You want to play karate tag? You just get kicked in the fucking head. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you don't. Most of the times, guys don't even get knocked out. They just get touched. You know, it's a lot of like this, like this kind yeah. of thing. And then when someone does touch, make contact, they separate and they call a point. Now, it's based on the very ludicrous notion that one strike could kill someone. Okay. And so you wouldn't want to be hitting anybody more than once. Yeah, you can do one, one hit or quitter shit. Yeah, so this is like based, you know, they started these tournaments based on that idea a long ass time ago. And they keep doing them that way. But the skill that you get from that is the ability to close the distance and hit someone. Look at that crazy jumping wheel kick you did. Yeah. That was I mean, a three a seven hundred and twenty degree wheel kick. Look at this. I that's, mean, that's crazy. If you're in a street fight, right, and you see a guy take a karate stance, yeah, there is a chance he's going to hit you with one of those. Most likely, that's a one hitter yeah. where you're, you take that shot. But if you're a wrestler, you go, "Oh, this is going to be shoot. great. This yeah. is going to be great. You're going to kick me. Okay, let me time this." And then I'll just yeah. I'm gonna tackle you on the concrete fuck face. That's why that yeah. da that Dagestinian oh. wrestling thing. Wrestling is the number one foundation of all martial arts. Yeah, if I think if you don't know how to wrestle, you can't fight. You have to know how to wrestle. Even the high level kickboxers, like you okay, bro? What happened? I'm still coming over with this allergies from last. You son of a bitch! You got us COVID. <laughs> it's COVID. It's the new COVID. <laughs> Give it to me. Um, even guys like uh, uh, 
like Alex Pajeda, who's like yeah. one of the most devastating strikers to ever fight in the sport. He had to learn how to wrestle before he could fight in MMA. Yeah. You can't just go in there and not know how to get up. You can't go in there and not know how to defend yourself. It's just too dangerous. I remember the old school when they did James Tony Randy Couture. Oh, yeah. And you're like, and Randy Couture's like, well, I'm not going to stand with you. <laughs> and Randy yeah. Couture's like, you can't wrestle at all. Randy ankle picked him. Yeah. Which is like embarrassing. He just dropped down and grabbed his ankle, like, sit your ass down. Yeah, dude. He didn't even let yeah. him have a shot. That was fun to watch. Randy was like, actually nice to him. He could have tortured him. He could have like proven a point and just stayed on him and punched him in the face as long as he wanted to. But that's why I liked Khabib because Khabib just did that to yeah. the top guys to that could wrestle. Yeah, guys that could wrestle were like, yeah, it was like watching someone fight a shark and get right. and get brought into the water, and you were like, he's just got you. Yeah, I mean that's what Poirier said about him. I just couldn't believe he was doing that to him. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? Just, you're so just so good. you're just so good that guys at the top level are like, I can't even fuck with this he's guy. Getting mauled by this dude, and he's talking to you. And Poirier tried for a guillotine at one point in time and almost had it. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was pretty tight. I watched Poirier that. has a nasty guillotine. Was that fight in? London or it was I think I, I remember watching why do I remember watching it in the afternoon I do not know but uh, I remember watching that and you're like oh he's got no he does oh it was Justin Gage was that the last fight Gagey Gagey was the last fight well, for with, with Gagey um, did he catch Khabib in a something I think he tried something and then he all of a sudden a triangle or a, a guillotine was it Gagey? Am I me reading, remembering it wrong? I, I thought know. it was Dustin Poirier. Almost had a guillotine. You probably know more than I do. I just I remember. I get him confused though too. Being uh, high at helium in Philadelphia during the day, and they're like, "We'll put the fight on here." And I was like, "That'd be awesome." I walk over from the hotel. The, the story was that he actually likes Gagey. Poirier. So it was Poirier. It was Poirier. Yeah, it was Poirier. Yeah. So here it is. He gets him in a guillotine. This is pretty fucking tight, dude. It's pretty fucking tight. And it would have been much better if he had that right knee engaged. See yeah. how was, is it, Khabib just steps over that right yeah, knee? Yeah, yeah. He just alleviated a lot of pressure there. But there's still a tremendous amount of pressure on his neck. Yeah. But the key thing here is Dustin tried to scramble and re-engage, but he never got that right knee in play. Khabib kept that right knee from being in play every time. See how he pushed it down and gets sideways? Yeah. That alleviates the pressure from the hips. So now the hips aren't squeezing down on your lower back anymore, which accentuates the pressure on and the And now neck. he's out. Yeah. Now he's out. It was the whole key to that. If he was in full guard, there. look at how scary it is. Then mm -hmm. all of a sudden he's on his he's on his back and he's yeah. just like shit, shit. Yep. Well, that's the that's the problem with pulling guard for a guillotine. Right here, right, and then he just switches over, switches goes over, over and now he's just gone as a back. Yeah, and, and you're just like, also Dustin needs to take a break here because yeah. he just exerted an insane amount of energy Fuck. trying to close the deal. So when you're trying to close the deal on a guillotine, your whole body is involved. Yeah, and you're arcing into it, and you know, and he didn't have the leg, man. And he then he's just. He didn't have that leg. If he had that right leg over, and that's why Khabib, that was his number one priority, he wasn't even defending the choke. If you notice, the number one priority is moving over that right leg. Yeah, got over him. Because as soon as someone has a guillotine like Dustin does, and they have two legs, and you're really trapped, it might be night-night. Yeah. It might be night-night. Because they're pulling down on your lower back, and then they're up on your neck and twisting like, it to the I side. I'd be trying to talk. And I'd be like, you can't even get hands involved. <laughs> yeah, you're like, just Fucksville. Please leave me alone. That, that was what I was saying last night where you get choked and it changes yeah. your voice and you go like hey, can you be so but that's just how like, fucking good Khabib was yeah. man he's so good and he'll it's never, almost a tragedy that he never wants to fight again cause he doesn't right it was like nope. the promise he made his dad it's beautiful It made his mother he yeah. was gonna have one more fight and that was gonna be it and it's beautiful Like that's a great way to go out and go now out. he's just a badass coach yep and he'll be one of the greatest coaches of all time and he'll go out as Without a doubt, one of the greatest to ever do it. Yeah. One of the greatest pound to ever do pound. it. Pound for pound. If not the best ever, he's definitely in the argument. There's, the, the argument is Mighty Mouse, who's always had a special place in my heart for when he was in his prime. Yeah. When he was Demetrius in his prime, Johnson. Mighty Mouse was a motherfucker to watch. He would do shit that no one could do. He would do shit where he would throw a guy into the air suplex him and then catch an arm bar in the middle of him being in the air. I just saw that clip. And finish it on the ground. I just saw the flying arm bar. There's not a champion alive that can do that the way Mighty Mouse did. <laughs> yeah, you like toss the guy in the air and then on his way down threw him in an arm bar when they both hit the mat. Bro, when he fought Henry Cejudo the first time, it was a master class. It was a master class. When he put Henry away. Yeah, when you're... This is his last fight. That was the fight with the fly. That's a great fight too, though. Show that. Show that 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 KO because it's a flying knee. And this is a guy who had knocked him out in the previous fight with a knee. 
So check this out. Look at this combination. Look at that fucking Bam. timing, dude. Dude, the That's, head. And walk away. Oh, walk my God. Walk away. Look at that timing, Oh, man. my God. When you're watching this cage side and oh. you see a guy like Mighty Mouse do yes. some wild shit. Yeah. Are you just like, Blown as away. a fan of the sport, you're calling it. But you're just like, does it take your brain a little bit to process? Like, what the it's fuck so did I magical. just watch? It's so magical. It's like, I know how hard it is to move that way. So when I see a dude who can move the way he does, I'm like, yeah. that is so fucking beautiful. So for, for someone who does there martial arts. Yeah, look at this. Flying so arm bar. This is against Ray Borg. So in the middle of the suplex, he catches the arm. Before the dude hits the ground. Oh, that's what it is. Before the dude hits the ground, he caught the arm. And then he swings over. <laughs> And get now he's having fun here. Yeah. He's having fun for him to do this. He's like, I'm gonna show off. And yeah. if you know uh, Demetrius, he's a fun dude. He plays a lot of video games, and streams awesome. and stuff. Yeah. He's a really sweetheart of a guy. You would never like imagine that. he'd be that good. He had a German suplex people up. into yeah. a fucking. He had a WWE into movie Bro, into a fucking WWE in the air. That's and this crazy. was a fight that he was just lighting this dude on fire. Like he was just lighting this yeah. dude on fire. He's at I t I maintain that he is the finest expression of martial arts yeah. I've ever seen. Because it's creative. It's, it's, it's just he didn't have the kind of competition and the men aren't as big. But if he was welterweight, he would be no question the greatest of all time. Really? No question. He was so good, dude. Yeah. You gotta look at them when they're in this window of time, and it sometimes it's just a few years, where they're they're accomplishing things in a way that is so extraordinary, you go, I've never seen anybody better. Yeah. And that's how I feel about Mighty Mouse when he was in his prime. And then the other one that that's like that is Anderson Silva. Anderson oh Silva, my when he God. was in his prime. All the defenses, the title defenses, that run. It was the way he was doing it, too, man. It was like he was operating at a different speed than them. He yeah. was processing things with a, like a, a 2024 computer, and yeah, they were using the way, some Windows 95. Yeah, the way he would dodge punches <laughs> all the time. And then I also loved... He was part of the reason I wrote that joke about translators in the ring afterwards because his voice was so soft and he yeah. was like, he's in Port <laughs> Portuguese and they'd be like, Anderson says he'll kill all comers and anyone. And you're like, but his voice is so sweet. His voice was like, what's uh, what's bro, what's bro? When, he, when he beat Rich Franklin to win the title. Yeah, it was Ace, like, Ace is it a, yeah. a, Ace Rich or yeah, Rich, Rich Ace, Ace Frank because he looked like Ace Ventura? A little bit. I love that. He looked a little bit God, like those him. were my mushroom days where I'd just take a ton of mushrooms and watch UFC. <laughs> <laughs> was That's a great. crazy thing to watch on mushrooms. Oh, dude, it was... Uh, dude, I got robbed uh, when I lived in Tucson because I lived with a weed dealer and I got fucking hogtied, like, oh, gone no. on 45 on the head, like, oh, cleaned no. out. I did the whole story on Ari's. It was the season Ari got fired, but this is not happening. But I lived with a weed guy, and we got set up, and I was just a roommate. I was how, just, far, how hard they hit you on the head? Uh, not hard. I had to pretend that it was harder, because the guy was, like, uh, smaller than me. <laughs> so I had to pretend that he really fucked my shit up, when really he just kind of dinked me. And then he was, I mean, he was a pro. Like, he had a army duffel bag, zip ties, like Holy had shit, had dude. like a real gun like a, like I had a cheap it was one, one guy it was two guys got both me and my roommate and they you know they knew we were college kids both guys had guns oh yeah hammers Jesus dude Christ. 45s I think Jesus I think both of them Christ. had 45 caliber like he was tapping it on my head being like you're gonna fucking die white boy where's the fucking money and you're like oh. I don't fucking know and then um so I got robbed and then I got out of it or whatever I was fine I, I wasn't physically hurt they took my car which had six loads of laundry in it so I lost all my clothes that sucked living wearing a bathing suit as underwear for three days because I was so broke I couldn't afford anything I lost my CD booklet. Did you ever get the car back? Yeah, cleaned out. Where was it? In the desert. That's what uh, happens in Tucson. It's all happened in Tucson. And they called me and they're like, we got your car. And I was like, is my CD? I, got I was at a bar and Tucson police called me and they go, we found your car. And I go, was the CD booklet in it? And the guy goes, no. <laughs> He's like, you're lucky we found your fucking car. That's the thing. We used to carry CD books in our car. I had a and zip had, one. Dude. That's I had a zipper one with multiple 250. pages. Dude, I had pages Wasn't of bands. Shit? I had a whole Soundgarden page. Oh, yeah. I had a whole Nirvana page yeah. with bleach all the way yeah. to fucking uh, dude. And you'd keep the you'd keep the CD thing for inside yeah. so it looked professional. Right. Dude, I had a banger of a CD booklet that got taken. <sighs> but then uh, that These night, kids today. yeah, they're just like not nah, digital. I won't own my media. But we went. I went to my buddy Sumner's house, and I took like probably three and a half 
close oh. to four grams and I was drunk before I took it. Oh boy. And S- S- Mark was sober and he let me in and we watched the first season of The Ultimate Fighter. Oh wow. And we had it on like Did you get robbed while you were watching it? No. This was at (laughs) night, but it was like hyping me up where I was like, maybe I would have pulled. I was on mushrooms, so I was like, maybe I would have pulled. I wouldn't have pulled shit, but I was like, oh, and then we watched that till like five in the morning, but I was just tripping, being like, watch it. I was like watching UFC on mushrooms rules, and I thought it was just the coolest. So I did it a couple more times, and I I was thinking the last time I did it was like Lesnar, Shane, uh, Carwin. Oh, wow. Because I was like, oh, he's from Colorado. I always loved Colorado fighters. That was the closest uh, Shane had come. I mean, he really came close to beating that guy. Yeah, that we Got watched on top it. of him, was pounding him. Oh, I wasn't on mushrooms. I was drunk at Hooters fight. with Lewis. Oh, that's funny. I was drunk at a Midtown Hooters with Lewis because I was yelling out <laughs> Aurora. And then fucking Shane Carwin lost. And I was like, ah! Because he gassed. gassed out. He gassed out. That was it. He emptied the tank trying yeah. to finish Brock. Because he, he wobbled yeah. him. He, well, he was on top of him, yeah. b- raining bombs down on him. A lot of referees would have stopped that fight. Really? Yeah. Watch it. L- watch it. Let's yeah. watch it. Let's watch the first, the end of the first round with Brock Lesnar and Shane Carwin. God, I forgot we were at it. We Shane at it. was a terrifying puncher. Terrifying. We he was the only guy in the UFC that they had to have gloves bigger than Brock Lesnar's. Really? Yeah, they had like four XL gloves. Because I remember when Brock came to the UFC, the they were like, gloves ever. they have to make his gloves bigger. Shane's are bigger. Really? Bro, Shane's hands Dude, what were a like badass. They were like canned hands. Look at these guys. Shane was so dangerous, man. Like people forgot about him, like in his prime, he could put anybody to sleep with like a six inch punch. He was so fucking dangerous. And he was a really good wrestler too. Yeah. And a Colorado guy, so mm-hmm. I loved him. He's a fucking beast, dude. Was he in the Greg Jackson gym with all them? Uh I believe well, well I know he's out of Colorado. Yeah. I think he trained with Jackson. Yeah, but this is at the point where he's already gassed. Yeah, this is at the point where he's gassed. And this is the second round. Yeah. This is when Brock wins. Can you go back to like the first round? I thought you said last round. Um, no, I'm at the end of the first round. Oh, so this yeah. is the so this is This is it. So g- go a little bit before that so you can see how this takes place. Cause like he, he stuns him on the feet. So they're standing up there. God, listen to that. And there was the uppercut. Look at that uppercut. That uppercut was nasty. He stuffed the takedown. Bro, Shane was so dangerous. So dangerous. I thought it was over right there. Look at this. It could have been over right here with a lot of referees, man. A lot of referees. Oh, I mean, there, not there here. has to be a feeling where you have Brock Lesnar and then you don't, and you go like, "Fuck!" Like, look at this. Look how close this is. So he's getting fucking pummeled, dude. And this goes on for a while. The thing is, Shane right now is emptying the tank because yeah. he thinks he's got the he's close. There. He's at the end. That's what he thinks. Yeah. This goes on for a while, dude. <sighs> dude it keeps amount. going on. Look at this. Big oh, shots. Oh. Like right there, stop the fight. Right there, you can stop the fight. But Brock is still pushing him off, but he's not really effectively defending himself. Like many referees would have been like, I've seen enough. Like right here, the blood spraying. Many referees. Damn. But nope. I don't remember this fight that well. I, yeah. I just remember that Shane gassed. Yep. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. The feeling of having someone almost knocked out and they don't call it. But it gets worse. Look. It gets worse. So now he gets, I think he fully mounts him at one point in time. Like, look at this. Look at this. This is big, dude. These are big fucking shots. That's a big elbow. Yeah. But he's tired. You can see him breathing heavy. Yeah. But now he's just looking for one big shot. I mean, dude, the way he has him, I've him. never seen him. I mean, he's beating the fuck out of Brock here. But now, those aren't effective. Yeah. But but the referee could stop the fight, man. This is fucking close. This is one of those things Damn. where like, the guy is getting beat up so bad, you could make an argument for stopping it. Look at all the blood, but Brock is fighting back. Shane gets on top of him again. Brock can't get up, right? He's yeah. getting mauled here. No, but Brock's saving energy doing this, right? 
Like, he's not. Well, I mean, he clearly had the better gas tank because he made it out of this, and then the second round, he was fresh, and Shane was done. Yeah. Like, Shane right now is done. Yeah. He's done. He's so tired. You have to understand how he has nothing in his arms He left. just exerted everything. He, bu- he emptied the tank. Have you ever seen a fight where a guy does that and then wins by using his legs or something? Most of the time when guys empty the tank that bad, they can't recover. So it's just they're done yeah. on everything. And so, look, Brock is scrambling at the end of the round, and he's yeah. getting back up and to now his he's feet. up. Now he's up. Damn, dude. If yeah. someone stands up like that, especially a Brock Lesnar against you, you go like, fuck. And Shane fuck. is kind of breaking here. Like, he's really tired. Like, yeah. look at him breathing. He's just trying to figure out a way to recover, and Brock's not going to let him recover. Because if he's defending constantly, then he's still breathing heavily, and then he's not going to be able to get his win back. Because yeah. this isn't just like, it seems like no one's doing anything, but he's got to fight Brock off him with that overhook. He's got to do something to like keep him. Uh, right now, he's not doing shit. Right now, he's just hanging on. Damn. And, and Brock is catching his breath, too. So Shane doesn't even have his hands clasped here. He's literally not, he's not digging that overhook. He's, he's really needed a break here. So, and Brock knows this, too. So Brock recognizes that he's exhausted. So Brock knows probably also that this is the end of the round. And he's going to make it out of this. And so then when he comes into the second round, he knows this dude's toast. Because there's a level that you get to where you're so exhausted, like, you're not going to be okay in a minute. Yeah. So so here's the second round. Do you think when he sits down or when he comes back out right here, he's like, ah, fuck. Yep. Oh, you can see him breathing. Yeah, he's already exhausted. And Brock looks way better. And Brock is going to just set it up, look for the moment. But he kind of knows that Shane's toast right here. And then he eventually shoots. Jesus, man. That's something where I would, you just want to be like, I just, God, let me go home. Yeah, I'm just fucking zapped. So he's moving away from the shots now. Look, they're like telling him to like, get the fuck over there. Oh, this is my. good for both of them too. It gives him a chance to recover. So he swung in there, tried to land a big bomb. Do you, do you think it's similar in any way, like being at a job where you feel out of your depth, where you're just like, fuck, I'm done. I thought this was it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there you're it like, is. There's Ugh. a shot. So he gets on top of him and eventually arm triangles him, submits him. Yeah, Here so he's just out. Here it is. He gets him in the arm triangle. I mean, this is, this is a heavy pressure, head and arm choke. Heavy pressure. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. He's got to push with his elbow. See how his hand is right there? Yeah. What he really needs to do is what's called answering the phone. You put your hand in between Brock's head and your ear, so he tapped. Yeah. He was done. You, the defense, and it's not the best defense, but it's the only thing you have, is to get your hand like this. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Because if, if they just have this like completely locked up, yeah. you're fucked. Jesus Christ. You got Christ. to get a little bit of space. Our future president, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Isn't that in an idiocracy? The, the, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a former <laughs> WWF champion. Yeah, that would that would absolutely be. We would hate Bro, idiocracy. I just watched Idiocracy about a year ago, and it fucking holds up. It's Mike Judge. Is He's just amazing. A man. He's by the way, Office Space still holds amazing. up. Amazing. It all one holds of the greatest up. movies of all time. Beavis Thomas. and Butthead yeah, still funny. Amazing. King of the Hill. Everything the guy does. He's Bro, unbelievable. Beavis and Butthead. When I first moved to California in '94, was the shit. Yeah. Couldn't wait for Beavis and Butthead. It was the funniest thing on television. There's great corn music videos. Julio. Oh, great. Remember when he became Corn dude, Julio? Yeah. Did he have too much the sugar? Great, <laughs> the great Corn Julio. I need TP for my bunghole. Dude, I was in middle school, and it was like. Everybody was doing Beavis and Butthead yes. impressions. <laughs> it was like, hey, where they'd be like, you just hear the weird kid in yeah. the back be like, that rules. Yeah. And you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. It made being a degenerate dirtbag fun. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. Beavis These and guys but- ruled. Yeah, the movie was great. Beavis and Butthead do America. Let me see what he does. He gets, so he gets too yeah. much syrup. <laughs> he's, just, he's just drinking all the soda. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I need TV for my bunghole. Guy rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I loved it. I remember going to see the movie like pumped, like uh, waiting, yeah. like wait, like getting friends together and being like Friday, Friday, Friday night, we're going to go see Beavis and Butthead do America. I haven't seen new ones. Aren't there new ones? Yeah, they're doing new ones. Are they good? Have uh, you seen them? Yeah, I've seen a couple. Did you like them? Because sure. they watch TikTok stuff yeah. now. Now oh, they don't watch music okay. videos. They watch like what we would watch and make fun of. Oh, nice. Social media, like the, that poem. They Perfect. would like to watch that. It was great. Perfect. Yeah. What's it on? Uh, Paramount Plus. Yep. 
Oh, okay. It's like buried on one of those streaming services. I have that one. You go yeah. watch it because yeah. that's like where South Park is. They yeah. got a bunch of stuff there. Yeah, Paramount Plus has some good shit on it. It's just annoying that you have to subscribe. Well, like, yeah, old Beavis and ones? Butthead. They're old now. Well, I mean, there's I think some of yeah, them. They just Sketch did. They are. Oh, they uh, the show I really want to watch is Ronin on FX. You mean Shogun? Shogun. Yes. Yeah. Shogun looks amazing. They put the two. I think there's two episodes out right now. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna watch it tonight mm. after shows. What streaming service is that? It's on, on Hulu. It's because it's FX. Mm. Yeah, it looks sick. I remember the original. Oh, the original, really? Yeah, the original was amazing. I didn't know there was. I didn't know this was a remake. Yeah, there was oh. an original show, Shogun. I'm way back in the day. Very or, excited or, or, for this. I mean, um, yeah, it was Shogun. This this looks awesome. It's this, based on a novel. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I love FX. Does random shit sometimes, and you're like, this is awesome. They so, do some great shit. Dude. Yeah, they, they do, do some great shit. They're kind of like what HBO used to be. They did the Shield. Remember yeah. the Shield? Yeah, that was a great show. The Shield was very good. Michael uh, Chiklis or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, Shogun, an American historical drama limited series created by uh, Rachel Kondo and Justin Marks, based on the 1975 novel of the same name by James Clavell. The novel's previously adapted into a 1980 limited series. Yeah, that's it. 1980 yeah. series. Click on the 1980 series. Who was in that? Oh, shit. So this was um, starring... Who's the guy? Can you find Richard a... Chamberlain. That right. That's can, right. Richard can you find Fri a... Uh, that's right. This is like when they were letting white dudes play Japanese guys? No, he was a white guy. Oh, he, he was? He was supposed to be a white guy living with the Shoguns. Oh. like yeah. Kind of like The uh, Last Samurai. Exactly. It's okay. basically like the, the Tom... Cruise movie, yeah, they just stole that idea. <laughs> it's like Shogun was the real version. Fucking of it. lifted. That's totally lifted. Yeah, like the one white guy fucking kicks ass as a samurai. Like good and luck, bitch. And we're watching that. We're going, yeah. yeah, bro. They were raised to sword fight. You yeah. shut your fucking mouth. You're gonna lose an arm <laughs> instantly. You're gonna lose an arm, and then the rest of your life you're gonna be like, Ooh. yeah. You're like, and you're and you have no honor. Yeah, because you, you were cocky. a dickhead, and they you cut your cocky. arm off. Dude, that would be a fucking. And they decided not to kill you and just leave you with no arm. But dude, then they shut off contact with the outside world and then all the shogun fell and shit and everyone was like yeah our militaries are advanced by like a hundred years now whoops and, and japan was like Fuck. forgot about bullets we gotta catch up well they didn't want to use bullets too right yeah. it wasn't an honorable way to kill yeah people. it was it they wasn't like bushido yeah they're one of the only successful cultures that fought off the mongols i mean you're talking about my favorite video game of all time ghost of tsushima yeah, game's unbelievable. It's a video game about the the samurais and the Mongols. Yeah, it's about the invasion <gasps> of Tsushima Island by the Mongols, and you, dude, you learn four different sword styles, and you change your sword styles to play. Dude, this uh, game, I played this game. I want to say three or four times completely. Look at the graphics. Too. It's unbelievable, and, and it's open world. So you ride your you ride around, and then you'll duel Mongols. It is there's also no difficulty level, right? It's supposed to be pretty hard. It's you can change the difficulty. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can change the difficulty level. That's awesome. You, wow. you go around, you get armor, you learn how to duel, but you start off after they lose the invasion. And so then this is the actual game or this is This is the game. Th this is the cutscene. But then that's the real game. That's what it looks like when you're riding through. It's unbelievable. Holy fuck, dude. This is amazing. Jin Sakai. So you could stumble upon a camp? That's what it is. And then you fucking sneak attack. Oh my god! Like right there, they have this. Is what you Look do? At this. So you can do multiple assassinations, dude. It's anyone this is I've insane. ever anyone I've ever told to play this game comes back and they're like, "That's fucking unbelievable." This is insane. Ghost of Tsushima rules. Oh my god! And they said they're due for a sequel because this came out a couple years ago. Flaming arrows. It's unbelievable. You do so much shit that you're like, "This is the coolest thing." And then you have one-on-one -on -one sword fights with Ronins and shit. Uh... Like your best friend is a Ronin that betrays you, and you have to fight him in an awesome sword, like big sword duels. It's awesome. Whoa! And your uncle is um, kind of like runs it, you know. And you have to either you choose if you go with him or against him. It's fucking rules. Wow, dude! It's easily my top three in my top three video, video games. Games are so next level. Now. Well, they're movies that you play now. Yeah, and like, they're more uh, compelling than movies because you're a player in it. Like Last of Us. The knock was it's like it's not as good as the game. Like you play Last of Us, you're in that shit. Or like uh, God of War, they'll never make it into a movie, but you play it as a game, and you're like, this is so fucking fun. Wow. 
Wow. You just get into shit. Spider Man Two, the video game, is dude, better you're than a real video game. I'm a junkie. nerd, Joe. Yeah, you're a junkie. For I'm it. a junkie, dude. Fuck it, right in the veins. <laughs> I uh, Spider Man Two. I mean Ragnarok. It's unbelievable. Wow. Spider Man Two is better than any Spider Man. The video game is better than any Spider Man movie they've made. Wow. It's it's as a comic book fan, it's better than anything they've Look made. At this. Yeah, dude. Like Balder versus Kratos. Are fucking insane. It's not as fun as doing Gay of War. God, the fucking. He's like, I want to suck, boy, boy. I'm gonna suck you. Is that what they do? <laughs> no, I just, just make so I just make fun of that. Shane and I used to do this thing. Yeah, this is the actual this. game plan. Ah, uh, that's a cutscene. Incredibly disappointing. Yeah, that's where you fight him. Better look out, Reds. You can't defend. Does he have just magic? Yeah, it's oh. all about this shit. You fight. You basically fight against Odin and everyone of like all the Norse gods. And they find out that you're a former uh, a Greek god. Oh, it's awesome! It fucking rules. With uh, Red Dead Redemption Two came out, <laughs> Shane, this was when Shane and I were going on the road together. I was taking shit on the road, and we'd do this. He would joke that I'm such a nice guy. He's like, "What's your demons? Like, what do you do?" And I was like, "It'd be funny if I like jerked off homeless guys." And that's what came out about me. So Shane and I would do a running bit where we would do a homeless guy being like, "Hey, watch out, buddy." You're about to make me come. We were like, and it's just me being like, shut up. I'm going to fucking jack you off. He's like, oh, hey, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Shane and I would do that for weeks. And then I was out of the country and Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. And I just got this voicemail from Shane that was so excited. He's like, dude, have you played Red Dead Redemption 2 yet? I'm like, no, I'm not home yet. And he goes, Arthur Morgan is our homeless jerk off voice. <laughs> and oh my so God. The main character of the voice is a guy going like, Well, hey there. And we're here like, dude, that is our homeless jerk off voice. <laughs> oh, jack you off under the Hey, mister. Hey, uh, brought some food and whiskey for you, fellas. That That's game another rules. game where you can do wild shit to people too. Wild right? shit. Mm-hmm. By the way, it's a game you can play four or five times and not find all the stuff. Like really? they they put that much work into it. Where they're like, no, nah, this is this is layered. You can go on treasure hunts and shit that you would never find unless you like win after it. You don't ever wonder if you're like killing too much time doing those things? All the time, dude. All the time. Does it give you anxiety? Yeah, but I also level it by like, all right, if I'm going to spend 30 minutes writing jokes, then I could play like video games for two hours. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm high. What else am I going to fucking do? But well, that's good if you give yourself I quit like drinking, a reward. My video game mm, went up. Makes sense. Fills the time. That makes because sense. honestly, like one in the morning, I'll hang out at the cellar till like one, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, "Time to go." I kind of want to go home and play video games. Have fun. Yeah, I want to go yeah. smoke a fat bowl and play yeah. fucking Ghost of Tsushima. So oh, that that's the new thing, Grand Theft like, Auto. Think about the pleasure that that kind of technology gives people. Yeah, people very much. that their their lives suck, but their video game lives are awesome. I get it, and it's the joy you get is real. It's, yeah, you have to deal with post video game. Post nut syndrome. We yeah. just <laughs> yeah, you absolutely around, like, like, wipe it off your belly, and you're like, "Who is a Greek god fighting?" Uh, f- your life is bullshit. Yeah, I fought Thor, but it is. Uh, they do incredible shit, and that's why it's like it's moving away from movies and shit. Where yeah. you're like, "Yeah, Spider Man movies are really cool," but when you're actually Spider Man and you're flying around New York City, and then you got to go fight fucking Venom, yeah. you're like, "This is unbelievable." Way Way it's better. unbelievable. Yeah, and but, then they're going to get those right, things is, to be virtual. Yeah, it's drugs. Yeah, the heavy drugs. Man. Heavy, though. Heavy, man. heavy. Heavy. And you better believe when I get to my hotel in San Antonio. Uh, Dan Soda, you're the man. Dude, um, Thanks for being honey. here. Appreciate you. You're always fun. Dude, um, thanks for having me. I'm excited to work Mothership this yes, weekend. Yes, I'm excited you're going to be there, too. That's I'm fucking pumped. And then um, tell everybody your social, all that stuff. So Got a new special out on YouTube called On the Road. It comes out uh, March 1st, which is, I think, today. But uh, at Dan Soder on everything, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I got a podcast called Soder, just having comics come and sit on my couch and bullshit for an hour. Beautiful. Yeah, man. And I'm on the road. I'm on the road. So, dansoder.com. Beautiful. I'll All be right. out there. All right. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.